and we're back. Yes, sir. And there's dark. What's up, dirt? Light. I'm not counting them. Uh, there's this uh, four door classic car that's been sitting in a guy's yard. Uh, by the road, uh, been seeing for a long time. I'm not sure what type it is, I believe it could be a dart. Not sure, I believe it's a Mopar. I do know that. Somebody will be able to tell you that's been sitting in the yard, uh, next to the wood line with the sun visor in the windshield. Thing. And it's a uh, flat black, uh, looking. <laughs> I don't know if it is a dart or not, but I have to take a picture I, of it. I can tell you one thing though. I will I will travel to get the right dart, but uh, you are way too far. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, you must have money, you got all these dots and darts. I'm like, no. No, 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 no. My dad bought them all when they were still like a hundred dollars a piece in the nineties, and he ain't never got rid of nothing. So if you have Dodge Darts that are hundred dollars a piece, we'd probably still buy them. Yeah, I was in college in nineteen eighty-five. I found a. A 68 Firebird convertible for $700, and I didn't have a $700 to buy it. Otherwise, yeah, that's, that would be 50 grand today. Okay. I just had it and stuck it in the barn for all that time. It's like, it's like uh, COVID hits, it's like boom. Oh, everything's gold now. Yeah. Like, 30 grand for like 30 years in the yard, and it's junk. It's got a lot. Oh, you motherfucker! <laughs> What'd you do, Dart? Motherfucker popped off and hit me right in the eyeball. I'm not crying, you crying. <laughs> oh, that bleeding shit. And uh, lick it. They take care of the boo boo. Hey, Joe. How are you tonight? Or morning? Or what, depending on where you are in the world?
thought I was gonna have to make a roll bar. <laughs> well, come on, there's gotta be another half to it. Don't, don't be that guy. Uh, four no parts. It's good. Uh, I got a 69 Dutch Charger that, of course, will make uh, generally out of it. Uh, I got a uh, 74 Plymouth Roadrunner that's going to be Daisy's car. Yeah, 78 Dodge Monaco police car. Will be Roscoe when you use this car, and then I got that uh, 2021 Dodge Charger kit. That's what I have too. What both cars have I done? Uh, I've done a 68, 69 instead uh, Charger, uh, 69 uh, Super B, uh, 69 Charger Daytona. Good evening. Good morning, Bruce. Yeah, good morning, everybody. <laughs> hey, welcome to the dark cave. You're here willingly, sir. Oh, I thought that Bruce was a collector world. Hey, <laughs> Mike, it, it expands, you know, it goes all kinds of different places. It's like the TARDIS. <laughs> oh, uh, neat late show. Yeah, well, I was tinkering and I seen the other one. I did another. Okay. I wasn't listening to it because I had it muted. And then I picked up my phone. Went, late night with Bob or whatever. I went, okay, cool. Late, I'll, late show, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump on. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting there working. He wanted to go to bed and figure, what the hell? I'm sitting here. I might as well have. So, you know, might as well get beyond. Yeah, well, I generally don't go to bed till about one o'clock anyway. So, hey. Oh, hi, Joe. <laughs> and okay, perfect. So I forgot to sit here and do some taping. And I got, how do you make? I'm doing eight million little decals, so yeah, that's flat. I got all the big, pretty ones are on there. I'm not doing all the little bitty, not so nice ones. I can't believe Jonathan's still up. No, I am. <laughs> he's out. He's out of school. He's on spring break this week. Ah, so he's not he playing did. hooky. No, <laughs> he wouldn't. Do, he wouldn't do that anyway. Yeah, uh -huh. he's just like my Jonathan. If he gets a chance, that's why I call him my son sometimes because I have a son named Jonathan too. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so how do you take a, a plastic tire and make it flat on one side uh Stand it there. you can heat it like well, an actual good. plastic one you can heat it up by and well, I forgot it right. the rubber Gosh. ones are harder to do well, yeah, actually, like, what i was thinking the actual plastic ones like these wings, the wheels on my plane. If I want to see if I can heat them up and uh, and then mush them down to make them bulge out at the bottom. Like, are you wanting like a flat tire look or and just more so of a weighted, like, weighted wheel? Like, roll off. Hey, I'm uh, making a junkyard car and I want a flat tire on it. Okay. So yeah, I have a I have that. a plastic tire because I figured the rubber would be too hard to do. So yeah, a plastic one you should be able to just heat it up and smush it down. I'll, I'll use my hot air gun. Yeah. There you got to find that exact spot between soft and and melted. Yeah, because this side's going to look like 
like that. And that are just kind of buried into the ground, make it look like it's buried in the ground, in the dirt. Well, it's going to be sitting on three blocks and one flat tire. Uh, okay. I, I found some hubs to put on the front that's got this brake hook to them. You already got your blocks? No. That's what I'm working on at this very minute is a bunch of damn cement blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't drop them on your toes. Yeah, well, I don't I don't think these will hurt. They're not very big. Yeah, <laughs> well heavy things come in small packages. <laughs> big things come in small packages. <laughs> Well, these are a little bit. I missized these a little bit, but I got a bunch of them. Up well, so I'm making a backdrop wall. Yeah, I seen that the other day. I uh, and I've got I got it where I can print the correct size ones now too. So <laughs> yeah, that makes a difference. These are these are pretty close. I could have stayed with this, but oh no, I had to play around again. Sure. Let's see. There's two. No, that's three, four, six, eight, ten. Damn, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Shit, I still got sixteen more blocks. Seventeen, kind of one in my hand to work the edges on. Yeah. This looked like a good idea until I started doing these blocks, and it's like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> when you sit there and got to sand each one. Okay. Is that the right size for that hole? No. Is it the right size for this hole? I kind of want to get this done so I can use it for some photographs. And I'm hoping it'll kind of get me. Dart's got me a little bit fired up. And I figure between that and this, maybe I can get, get the fire lit under my big butt. Maybe build something this year. Key to it is don't overwhelm yourself, bub. Huh? The key to it is don't overwhelm yourself with too many projects at one time. Well, so that's what happens. I get these squirrel moments about every 15, 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> that's why yeah, you get question. A Yo. Are we PG? We're after midnight. Knock us up. I'm not monetized yet either, so. Well, uh, here's to you. <laughs> Have you bought the food, Dart? Dart had to have him a little bite of the corn. Now the baker's he's a pussy. He's chasing it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember if I ate anything, so I had to put something in there with it. Yeah, my hat's off to anybody who can drink it. I mean, I can drink it. Problem is, I get right. mean as hell. Kentucky well, corn? Yeah. He, 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 he's he's the kind of, he's kind of, Jager Monster is the only dark liquor I can drink and still be happy. Okay, I, I got the white stuff. Bourbon? Man, I turn in this 10-foot, 900-pound ignorant redneck. <laughs> well, See, I had thought I had not had it since I was about 25, and I'm 35 now. And I thought it would be good about six to seven months ago, because I remember I liked it then to buy <laughs> some. And then I realized at 35, I ain't drinking that shit nearly as quick as I used to could. 
<laughs> oh yeah, one uh, one mason jar lasts me about a year, not anymore. Yeah, they, they, now and I've also used this for cooking, right? In the olden days, that was that was one night's worth, and now I use about one a year. I use about I use <laughs> over half of what's missing for cooking because I can't drink it. But I ain't going to let it go to waste. Well, the nice thing about it now, so you can enjoy it. You get a little warm, fuzzy feeling, but you're not, you know. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I drink it in this. Me and my, my friend, I'm not naming names if you're watching. Love you, <clears throat> brother. But uh, we. <laughs> We can we can polish that off for tonight. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's a difference between can and should, you know. Yeah, we <laughs> should have <and> did. <laughs> yeah. There was no should that ever was. <laughs> well, see, there was a time in my life my favorite beverage of choice was Everclear. <clears throat> and the picture got destroyed in a house fire, which I'm sad to say. Um because it was kind of cute, but it was like three. The picture was taken like at three, four o'clock in the morning. And I was kind of cuddled up in the fetal position. And my ever clear bottle was my pillar. I, uh, my, my, my brother, I, I, I've told this story many times, so he doesn't care. But it was his, I'm not going to say the age. It was his birthday. <laughs> And uh, we we bought a bottle of tequila, bottle of vodka, and a bottle of uh, Jack. And uh, I was attempting suicide. <laughs> no, it was it was for it was for like eight people, and it was for who whatever you like. That's what you drink. It, we wasn't trying to polish it off. That wasn't the goal, and we didn't by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, the the jack was gone, but everything else was there. Uh, but anyway, I was lit up. I was gone, and I pulled an all nighter that night. <laughs> and about halfway through the night, because I'm a mellow. Well, then I don't know about now because I ain't got slobbered and drunk. <laughs> but I'm mellow. I'm calm. I'm just leave me alone. And we're all good. Me and my brother were sitting on the balcony, second story. And uh, that calmness came to, I, I have an idea. There's, yeah. a trampoline. There's a trampoline under this under this balcony. And my brother's about sober because he didn't drink as much as I did. I'm not sober. And all I can remember is it's fuzzy. Is looking down at that and thinking that would be fun. <coughs> and my brother, see, I haven't said anything. He sees me looking at this trampoline below us. And he's like, Asa, no. <coughs> <coughs> and I said, Why? He said, Do not jump off this balcony onto that trampoline. <laughs> Oops. Oops. No, I, I'd, I'd have been. Like hold my I'd, beer moment. I'd have been. I'd. I'd be probably paralyzed, if not dead. Because then I was two hundred and eighty-five pounds. So I was a big old boy. That trampoline from a stack of story gonna go straight to the ground. <laughs> and that's why he explained. He's like, "You're gonna die." He said, "Listen, listen, look at me." And I was, you know, how you do with a drunk. He was like, look at me. Here. Here. It will break. You are too fat. And he's never, he's never made fun of me because I was fat. But he had to explain it. It will break. It'll break. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> he said, set back down. Watch the watch the sky. 
<laughs> then, then my second idea was let's get on the roof and watch the sky from the roof. And he stopped me from that idea too. <laughs> I got a good brother. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Most of them are like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> but if I had been sober, we'd have done it. Because we'd done it before. You know what I mean? But yeah. he wasn't about to let my wobbly ass get up on top of that roof. Because it was a three-story house, so I'd have went three stories down. <laughs> Humpty hum saddle the wall. Yeah, it's uh, well, you know, no good story starts with a soda pop or a Sally. <laughs> no, I, and, and believe it or not, I ain't been drunk too many times. Now that I think of, it. I think I ain't completely drunk four, five times. Now, warm, you know, shouldn't drive more, a little more than that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, day to day to day to day, probably three or four. Well, that's, uh, I can't say that. <laughs> I've been known to go for. Five days. Drink, 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 drink. Of course, I was doing other things along with it, which helped your drinking ability. Just like at one time, I come back from bike week. And now my, she was my, well, I don't even think she was my fiance yet. I think she was, we was just dating. The lady. Anyway, she come by to check on me. About 12 hours after I had got home from Daytona. And, buddy, I was across the bed, butt naked, out cold. She freaks out, calls 911. They bust the front door in. Great. Just to wake me up. It's looking nice, Bruce. Yeah, well, it's not going to look that way after a while. It's going to be a rest bucket. What you, you know, I'm on? Getting, sorry. I was talking to myself. What you working on, Bruce? 1971 Mach 1. Ah. It's a piece of crap kit. Yeah, yeah, I'll go along with that. And uh, I got tarred screwing with it, so I'm not done with putting lipstick on it. So now it's going to be a pig. A rusty one. Oh, I have one. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you I'm blocked. I've had about enough of you all coming over here to the dark cave and losing parts. <laughs> I hear you, brother. It's always someone else's fault. Well, Bye, guys. I took a big piece of cardboard and blocked off to the area where you put your feet under the desk. My parts yeah. don't grow on the desk no more. Yeah. Because they can't get there. <laughs> yep. They're right beside my feet or behind me. It depends on which way they bounce. I got the same kit, Bruce. Uh, my uh, dad, he's going to build it. He's going to build it like uh, Eleanor, the original Eleanor from Gone in 60 Seconds. This is that James Bond one. Oh. Yeah. It's... I got the one that's yellow and black on the box art. Yeah, I'm, I got the James Bond one over here beside me, and uh, I got it for $9, and that's about what it's worth. Remember, you took a look at it after I started bitching about this one. Yep. It's just this junk, junky, yep. but I can build it. Hey, I'm building it. I'm like you. It's going to be a junkyard car. I'm just trying to decide if I'm going to put dents in it or not. 
already got them. Or at least mine does. Okay. I will put extras. <laughs> well, I kind of made I kind of made the decision last night that this little putting that sixty six Pro Street Nova chassis underneath that Mobius sixty five body was looking good, and I had to try to push it. And I'm tired of fooling around with suspension. I'm I'm gonna do what it takes to get the ride ride height stance I want to hell with detail because all I'm more concerned about is stance wheel choice and paint well that's kind of how I'm building this charger exactly exactly brother I'm, I'm just like the, the buddy build car um, I'm going to do what I do body work wise it'll be slick but it's not going to be an accurate car. It's going to get a motor, but it's I ain't plumbing and I ain't wiring squat. I probably put a distributor in mine and wire it. But as far as anything else, no. Just because I am going much. Hemi and it's going to and the Hemi's are easier to wire. But see, that's the thing. I'm on the fence about putting a 426 Hemi in it. Or the 429 single overhead cam motor in it. Depends on who you want to piss off. <laughs> well, I'm fixed to hurt. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm fixing to build a butt hurt car anyway. Uh, thinking about a '67 Chevelle Pro Street car with a twin turbo Hemi in it. <laughs> and I just got the file for a Reed. Uh, power uh, a Reed Turbo 400 that I will probably stick behind said Hemi in said car. Well, all I know is I have one more time of putting the body on the frame because I'm, I'm starting to crack the quarter panel on my charger. Oops. Yeah. Uh -oh. uh, we'll say uh, the charger hit the wall on the drag strip. It ain't that well, big yet. Tap the, the rail occasionally. Oh, I'll cover it up. Bet you ass I'll cover it up. It, just what? That's <laughs> like that file, that file I'm fixing to get for that Steve Morse motor. It's not a, it's Chevrolet ish, but it's also got some Mopar love to it. So. Well, I'm thinking about hopping out of here. So. All right. Have a good night. Right, Bye, Johnson. We good. Bye, Dad. <laughs> Bye, Fat Man. My old band. Bye, Dad. Bye, Thur. You have a good one, young man. All right, you too. <laughs> I think in 10 blocks, going to have to wait a little bit. My damn fingertips are hurting. Boy. Let's see. Well, how many blocks can I lay tonight? There's one and a two and a three and a four. A one and a two and a three and a four. Rich. <laughs> I didn't know we was at Lawrence Welk's radio station. Ah, a one, a one, a two, a one, a two and a three. Ah. You son of a bitch. Where did you go? Oh. Not I, should wiped, I should have wiped my finger off before I done that. <laughs> this resin dust don't taste good. <laughs> you keep saying that. I know. So I told you I had a bad memory. <laughs> That's part of the reason why I got a divorce. No, I know I got a divorce both times. I've no, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got a divorce because she liked Emma. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, you have one in that it was so good she thought everybody ought to get a taste. Hey, that's a more, more politically correct way of saying what I wanted to say. Say. <laughs> it's a Kevin Smith. It might have been oh, all right. I got to take two every now and again. Evan, RKD, we got room if anybody wants to get your nose in. 
Come on well, in. Sit a spell. I'm going to have you, KD. You're not camera shy. I put this bill on hold. Okay, so this is going to get super glued. That's what that's going to get. I mean, they have to put it on hold and make a junker out of it. That's the one to say <laughs> you want to put with it. So that's the thing, you know, like you hear this, oh, it's a shitty kit. No, it just won't build the way you're thinking about building. It wants to go another direction. Well, I've lost the fucking yeah. freaking windshield. I gotta make one of those too, a broken windshield. I watched I watched how BG did his today. I I have I've spent countless hours of the month of March getting things ready for this show because I've been so excited. Show coming up. Yay, yay, yay. Now, the show's this coming Saturday, and I'm at that point now. Damn, I wish this shit was done and over. Oh. <laughs> Are we done yet? Yeah, really. <clears throat> I ran the printer, I think, twice yesterday. Maybe three, I guess about three times. So printing these quick change rear ends I got. And the cement box that I'm using for myself is on that same plate. Well, I'll kill two birds with one stone. I'll build some quick change rear end inventory and get my cement blocks for my wall. Because I'm doing the back wall at one end. That's it. Just a corner. Kind of like the, the so-called abandoned corner in the shop. There'll be some, you know, one of my multiple uh, projects from the shelf of doom will get photographed in it. And maybe that'll inspire me to get one or two of them down and actually work on them, if not finish them. It's like my little 41 Plymouth is sitting here in front of me. Chassis done, interior's all painted, body is prepped, primered, painted, base cleared, wet sanded. All I gotta do is the full trim and final clear. And a couple of you know little doodads I put on before I clear coat them. This is that. my very last shelf of doom kit. I don't have any of my shelf of doom left. This was the last one. My shelf of doom's at least five years worth of damage. I, I, I have, I no longer have a shelf of doom because I've used the shelf of doom for parts for all the ones that weren't doomed. See, that's what's going to happen to a couple of my doomed projects is they fix to become uh, parts donors. Quick. I've got that AMT 34 Ford truck over it. I really, I got that idea now to get it, down, get it back out and finish it. It's a late 50s, early 60s custom style truck. All right. Mild custom. You know, it's pretty paint, tuck and roll interior, uh, chrome wheels, you know, a little shit like that. Got a question. Yeah, on, sir. On, on one of them parts cars, would, it, would one of them happen to be a Revell Charger? You need a windshield now, don't you? Well, I do believe so. I'm going to look, I'm going to go look somewhere really quickly and. Uh, well, I'll be your package. I won't have it ready to go out till like Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Yeah. So if you need a windshield, let me know. Uh, Cause I'm like 89% chance or certain that I've got a brand new extra windshield for that car. Well, I'll let you know in about five seconds. If that damn, if that damn cat is out there, I'm going to kick it down. <laughs> and Dart had him a little schoolgirl moment out there in his, in his truck earlier. Well, this one I just I started it probably oh shit seven or eight years ago, and I just kind of lost interest in it. So I went back in the box, and 
I was looking for quick build stuff the other day, and I dug this one out to finish me. That's me. I need to quit thinking, overthinking this stuff, and just build the damn the cars. Ain't gonna be perfect. Well, that's what I keep trying to tell myself is uh, I'm like, is I'm not put. You're not putting it on the show table. Be I'm like not, Glenn. Bro. Be like Glenn. Don't worry about it having a dry shaft or not. Hey, Kevin. Well, I know What's the drive shaft in my 55 is too short, so I'm going to have to either make a, make a longer one or go with that. Hey, what? Are we in? Yep, you're here. We can Howdy see you. Howdy, fellers. I see you. <laughs> fellers and smellers. Blue and sniffers burn. unite. <laughs> Miss seven six nineteen sixty eight. Yeah, that was a little lighter for me. Not much, but a little. Yeah, I was sixty one. Yeah, I'm a nineteen sixty seven model. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was around sixty one. I when I first started. <laughs> Well, I was made in 64, but it wasn't delivered until 65, so it's like a 64 and a half. There you go. Yeah, that's it. There you go. It's like the Mustang above. Yeah. I, my dad don't make, he, it ain't a big deal to him, but my mother, I'd give her a hard time. This is, you know, when I was, it hit adult age and all. Uh, but, you know, I did the math. My mother was three three months pregnant in the wedding photos. And uh, when mom and dad were dating, in fact, the car he took her to the prom in was a 65 Pontiac Grand Prix 389 Tri-Power four-speed car, triple black. Or as I affectionately called the conception car. My mother just, boy, she, I, it, 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 it wasn't like, I, mom, come on now. I took you to prom in that car, and I know what happens on prom nights. That's right. Ain't no dummy. It happened on both my prom nights. Exactly. <laughs> How many of the 70s kids were the product of a van, right? Yeah, really. Exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there was either some naive folks back then, or the gen the, the guy had two cars. Yeah, had a van and something. He picked them up in, then went and got the van. Funny thing is, Roxy's dad let me use his van. <laughs> <laughs> Still remember the brakes going out on it. <laughs> oh goody! <laughs> yeah. yeah, he he was a van man. That's for sure. <laughs> That's all this talk about these van builds here lately got me wanting to do one. I'm like, yeah. no, no, I got too many. I don't have a van model kit and I got too many in here to begin with. I think I got the old A team when I got it out of the box and put it right back. Really? I got four rebuilders I bought years ago off of eBay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I give uh, ten bucks for all four of them. All you gotta do is put them back together pretty near. It. Cool. We don't want to. We don't want to talk about what happened. But I want to say that's. I, I look over here at my wall of wheels and tires and going, "Damn, I got some sweet shit to look good on a van." <laughs> yeah. And it's like, nope. Focus, Don. Focus. Quit. Quit. Focus. I got shit spread out at me again. Did you? Yeah, did. My, was... buddy, my buddy had a mural of a naked woman on the side of his van. He was always getting pulled over. They just wanted to check the van out. I, uh, I, I thumped the, back, the, the side of the bed expecting the critter to run out. And I, when I touched the back of the bed, the neighbor's dog barked. 
<laughs> so you still damn near shit yourself anyway. Huh? <laughs> that son of a bitch. <laughs> you got it rough there, buddy. Yeah, motherfucker. Dart, you might want to stay indoors the rest of the night. Well, I think you're right. Just, just say that damn dog. I'm like, root, root, shit. You're just not made for outside, Dart. I'm not, not in the dark. <laughs> oh. Mighty shit it in here. Man, it seems like you just started that plane last night, Bob. It was last week. Jeez. Okay. Uh, I got, I'm going, I, I got I back on Draco and that, that kind of sidetracked this thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I forgot about that. I had to wait for paint to dry. That dragon's cool. Bob's got a got just awesome focus. <laughs> I need that dragon here to eat my daughter's snake she just got. <laughs> well, that thing give me the creep. She come in with that thing coming out of her shirt and I about shit myself. <laughs> Little bit of eight inch snake I about died. I used to have a really cool snake. It was an aquatic one, uh called a snail head. Yeah, and uh, it lived in the aquarium all the time. It didn't. It hardly ever came out of the water. Um, okay. And you just go down to the bait shop and get two dozen goldfish and throw them in the tank, and he ate when he wanted to eat. And, yeah, so you got go down and get the mice and stuff and feed it. That's nasty. That's the only time having a snake I can see would be interesting. Yeah, because I've had friends that had you know have had pet snakes and. Yeah, feeding time. I'd go over there. They drop that little white mouse in there, and the mouse freaks the hell out. And the snake sitting over like, wouldn't you? Yeah, okay, <laughs> chill, brother. It's all good. The mice wears itself out. Then the snake goes over and goes, oh. The head of the snake was was shaped like a snail. It even had the two little eyeball looking things sticking out, and it would just oh, sit there motionless in the water until the uh, goldfish got within striking range, and then boom, boom, it was done. Gone over. So it's time to devour him. Huh? But you just say you throw two dozen goldfish in there and uh, he'd eat one to eat and you never had to. <coughs> never I know, had to mess with a it. big fan of snake. This is like big fish, basically. I think I could handle a little snake stuff. better than I could a tarantula or something like that. Yeah. Here's, Here's your little the, this This cat, he dies. He goes to heaven, and he's standing there, and they let you know, of course, they let him in, you know, he's like, and he's like, uh, Lord looks at me, so what can we, what, now that you're here, what can we do for you, my son? And the cat says, look, he said, I've been chasing mice or getting chased my whole life. I'm tired of running around. I just want to lay down and sleep and just be comfortable. It's okay, so he gives him his big, fluffy pillow. And the cat's laying on him. He's chilling out. He's, you know, just he's in heaven, literally. Well, then about a week or two goes by, and these six little mice, they die. They get up there, and, you know, God lets them in and says, Well, y'all been so good. What can I do for you? They said, Well, you know, we've spent our life running, running, running from this, that, one thing after another. So, uh, God blesses them, gives them a, puts roller skates on all six of them. A few weeks go by. He's walking through, you know, walking through heaven, checking, looking on, in on things and that. Runs across the cat. The cat's just fat. He's just massive. God looks at me and says, well, my son, how's things going? He said, he looks like you're doing well. And the cat said, yes, sir. Thank you very much for the pillow. It's really comfortable. Oh, yeah, and by the way, thank you for the Meals on Wheels program. <laughs> okay. Uh, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah, Meals on think Wheels. Was Sorry. <laughs> I'm sitting there visualizing my son roller skates for, for one. <laughs> oh, <geez. coughs> oh, boy. I guess some of my jokes ain't so bad then, right? There you go. See, there's always a wor wor worse joke out there. You just got lucky and got to hear one tonight. Yeah. That's what I was telling Cliff earlier. I need some new jokes. 
Oh, my sister, she's like, I cannot believe that my little brother has gotten in and learning and telling dad jokes. Yeah. I'm like, really? That surprises you? How? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying. My brother Chip, he's pretty good at his little short jokes. Some of them I get from him. That and our buddy Glenn, he's good at jokes. Oh, love Glenn. I I'll still, take I still use his keyboard joke. I gave one to my brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. I held it by my hand and gave it to my brother. He said, what the hell is this? I said, that new keyboard you always wanted. He's like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I still got it sitting out on the front porch where he left it. I had a friend that, and it's true story, okay? True story. I've known him for years. He's gone now, but I've known him for years. And he was born with no arms from his elbow. He was just a sub, right? No arms. And he only had one leg. True story. And no I was shopping for him for Christmas. And I wanted to get my friend something good, you know, something he could use. And uh, he liked uh, the college football team OU, of course, because I'm in Oklahoma, right? And I seen over there on the rack OU gloves. I almost made it out of that store with a set of gloves for my friend with no arms and no hands. <laughs> that kind of mean. No, no, I told him about it. I was like, hey, bro, you ain't going to believe what I just did. He said, what'd you do? I was like, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'll shop for you for Christmas. He said, well, you ain't got to do that, you know, the whole humble thing, yeah. right? And I was like, yeah, I know, but you're going to laugh at this. He said, what? I said, I tried to buy you some OU gloves. And he let the biggest <laughs> cackle I've ever heard in my life. See, that's somebody <laughs> trying to take a joke. But he, he said, thank you. And I said, for what? And he said, because that tells me something about you. And I didn't even I didn't even get it myself. Is he said, You see me like you see everybody else. Yeah. Yep. And I was like, huh, he's right. Yeah, people don't want to be singled out, do they? But he, he's, Found that out. he's a cranky bastard. I miss yeah. him, but he's a cranky son of a bitch. <laughs> well, that'll make you cranky when you're hurting. Yeah. Well, Dart, you kind of got to look at it his way, too. With no hands, he can't, you know, he can't shake his best friend in the world. Right. We never had that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be well, sensitive. <laughs> I know it would be with me. Yep. But uh, I just thought that was, I thought it was funny. I'm like, dude, I just tried to buy you the clubs. <laughs> <laughs> He made he made fun of me that for for that for years. He's like, "Why don't you pick me up some gloves on the way over?" <laughs> Thanks, bro. <sighs> I remember his he he drove a full size square body pickup, Chevy pickup. She was about that high off the ground. No joke, no exaggeration. Yeah. Uh. A long bed, and uh, the steering wheel on it was about that big. Yeah, because he took his nub and and yeah. he drove like like right. that. Of course, you know he ain't got that. So it, it it I I took it to the store one time. <laughs> <laughs> I can't and you should what that was like because the steering wheel's this big, but it's pushed out this far. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm driving no girl like this. <laughs> and she got a mild small bark in her, so she'll she'll get away from you if you let her. Let yeah. me guess I, your I, belly got in the way. <laughs> no, no. Right now, that happens I to was, me every time I get in my car now. I was quite skinnier then. But it was still, you know. Yeah. And I, I kept the windows up so nobody could see me driving that goofy thing. Because <laughs> I had to look goofier in hell because my elbows were up near, you know. <laughs> He's like this. Yeah, that's what it looked like. <laughs> and you couldn't, you couldn't do it, you know, one hand, because with that little steering wheel and me not being used to it, I had to hold on to that old girl. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of the time I borrowed my brother-in-law's Piero. Felt like the same thing. Man, that wasn't nothing but a go kart with a body. Man, but uh, I got out of that he died. My back and ass killing me. He died in that truck. Did Damn. He? Yep. He said. He said. I, I want to ask him. You sell that truck? He said, Nope. I'm taking it with me. Well, I need a new windshield. Okay. I think like this way. I was trying to make one. You need a windshield for a Ravel charger? Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> okay. I, I look. Look what happened. Oops. It broke. I was trying to make one out of the uh the the road <clears throat> runner. Yeah. Yep. Because here's the one for the charger. Oh. It's got curtains. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he, he said, he said, I'm going to take it with me. I said, okay. Ha, ha, you know, joke. Ha, ha, ha. Well, he was moving to be with his family. I don't remember where. He was a long way away. And he priced his truck to me. And I was going to buy it. But he said, I need, he needed it for like a couple more months, right? And I was like, yeah, ain't a problem. As long as it still runs like it does now, I'll buy it, you know? And uh, December 3rd, 2016, he, uh, he put a, He uh, wrapped her around the tree. Good boy. It was it was raining. He was less than a block away from his house. Hey. Yeah, them trees I mean, are. They tend to stay put when you hit them. I think he fell asleep. Cause I went to the to the site, and it looked like he dropped the wheel off, and then. Got sideways and it corrected. And on that second correct, he knew he was in trouble because he was awake by then for sure. Because yeah. he, he was wide open. There was tire smoke, I guarantee you. She was she was wide open when she hit the tree. He was trying to get her to come back around or spin and hit it ass first instead of but instead it hit it right in the A pillar. He was driving her. He was giving her all she had. I believe. I don't know that for a fact, but yeah, them, them trick can be pretty hard to hit. Well, there's two scenarios that could have happened though, from the marks, because there was a, a a little cove where somebody could pull out and pull into. And it's just topped a hill, so somebody could have pulled out in front of him, and he dodged them. And on that wet, it came around. Yeah. And if they left my friend there to die, you're just a pile of. Yeah, that's that's BS. I never was yeah. in the hit skip thing. Anybody that be that cold. I mean, in, in reality. <laughs> 
he he had no chance. He was he was on impact. Because it it uh, it hit so hard, it it moved. It literally wrapped the truck around him. Okay. Yeah, there was no. Yeah, I hit a tree once, tried my car off the tree, drove away, so I was lucky. Yeah. We was we were 16 years old, and we all had our sunglasses on driving at night. That was a real brunt move. <laughs> Next thing I know, we're out there trying to get the car off the tree. The guy but you up, were cool, though. Yeah. The yep. guy we'll, we'll do it. out there yelling and screaming, you hit my tree. It's like your tree hit me. <laughs> so hell no, this damn thing jumped out in our way. Yeah. Now I drove that car for six months after that, <clears throat> with, with one headlight, of course. Is that '69 Ford with a closing headlight? Oh yeah. The only only one of them would work after that, for some reason. I can't believe, probably. <laughs> it had nothing to do with that tree impact. That was a tough car, man. That thing went through all kind of crashes. That's, That's why I lived up in Toledo. Or toiletto. Yeah. Like I, like I like to call it. Yeah, that's been an affectionate nickname for that city for a long oh, yeah. time. You better be good. Clinger will get a hold of you. Yeah. <laughs> get sick mud hands on you. Glass city, my ass. I call it ass city. That's not doing what I needed to do. That won't either. I have no blade in that one. What'd you find, Cooper? I, I take it back. I went and looked at my uh, no-no shelf. I do have yeah. one project in there that Damn. I need to work on, but it's not a car. Fun fact. Or two projects. Neither one of them are a car. Well, and I don't mean to put anybody down. This is not meant you know, uh, picking on nothing, but I don't say you can really call yourself a modeler if you don't have at least one stalled project or, you know, one sitting on the shelf of doom. I mean, this is part of it. Yeah, I got Oh, all they ain't none of them run. I I'll, I'll correct you. <laughs> I'll correct you if you haven't had one at some time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's just part of it, you know. <laughs> So I'm trying to kind of get back to my childhood as far as just building models, you know, not being worried about every little day town, I'm, you know. Yep. Get I back to you. where basically like I you know, like I was as a kid, only nicer paint. And that all four wheels stand up straight. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, I would like them to all point straight, but if you'll watch the project with the Broby, <laughs> once they're crooked, they're staying crooked, bro. <laughs> well, there are some rim mounting systems that it don't matter what you do, they ain't going to stand straight. They wobble so much from the factory. You know? Hey, I weeble and I wobble, but I do fall down. You know, some of, yeah. some of the AMT things where they got the little insert inside the rim backer, and then it mounts to the axle. They flop around on there, you know. They, if they're too tight, always... yeah. If they're too tight, then they don't move at all. And if they've got any wiggle to them, well, then they they got camber. You know? Well, yeah. And and I see what you're saying, Don, because like this nope. charger I'm building right now, I I I had plans to detail the paint, the interior, and I changed my mind. I'm gonna fog it black. Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm going to do different color interiors, but I'm not getting carried away. Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, like my 64 Plymouth fat tire car up there. You know, I showed a little love to the interior with paint, and I made a little bracket to go on top of the dash for the tack to sit on. You know, uh, yeah. Um, I, cu I cut they, the gauges and shit out of it. That's about all I'm going to do. 
um, if I'm not mistaken, the kid had decals for the gauges. I use those. Yeah. But I'm just not into all the, the little, like, hey, you don't see all that shit in there once it's all in the car. All right. And you know what pisses me off? Is I know daggum well I have a windshield around here somewhere for this because I have this. I haven't finished. Ah. And, I, and I've now already started robbing parts off of it, so it now goes on the parts shelf. This is one of them stalled projects. Or, or did I use the windshield? No, that leaves. There's still a windshield out there somewhere. Because I use, there's still a windshield out somewhere. <laughs> I built too many parts. What year charger is that, Dark? This one's 69. The one I'm building is a 70. They're all the same kit, just different noses. In, the in a that AMT panel. MPC? Is that no. MPC? The Ravel. Ravel. All right, yeah. then it's Ravel specific because the AMT is the I one piece got front the, and rear. Yeah. I, I still got the 67 charger they gave me when I went on the tour of the Ravel monogram plant. It was the 67 or 66 charger. The fastback. 67. They were running production on it. Threw one at me off of the line. I said, "Oh, cool." Carried that home. I, the plane with me. Never did build it. <laughs> I'm gonna build a 67, 66, 67 Charger eventually, and it'll be right up Don's alley. Looks like a pretty nice kit. It is. It's beautiful. I spent well, my. I probably spent four hours with them fellas in the model shop there at Rebel. They're, they were working on chassis for something. And that's when they were redoing that Pro Pro Series 44 convertible. They had, yeah. the wooden, they had the wooden buck sitting there, a guy carving on it. That was cool. Well, uh, if I, when I get to it, I understand I don't have the kit right now, and I'll get it later. Uh, I'm going to build a pro street style, you know, big tire, and I don't know yet if it's going to be a blown Hemi, or what I'd really like to do is put the slant six in it with a hyper pack intake on it. There you ain't, go. Ain't you had enough doing decals there, Bob? <laughs> no. What kit would you get the slant six out of? Who's got the best one? Uh, I don't know. It's right here. The one I built. When I get on roll, I roll. Going three thirty. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, now, if you get this kit as any of the race car versions that have the race car on the box, they don't have the slant six in them. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So you have to get the plain Jane version. This also does not have the max wedge motor in it. So this is either a 383 car or a uh, slant six car. Outside so. the Ford 390, that slant six is probably got to be the best engine ever built. Here, let me show you something. Oh, God, put me oh that's loud. You have to mute when you do that. I muted him. He'll have to unmute himself when he comes comes back. Yeah, that that about freaking blew my earphones off my ears. If I showed my belly to you, I'm sorry. Hey, we all got one to match. Promise there wasn't nothing else in that picture. But it's kind of hard. You're muted. My phone here. I guess that's, sorry, I forgot to mute mine. That's all right. We took care of it. That's my fault. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, that, that's extremely loud. <laughs> Put me on big screen for a second, there, Bob, if you would. Sure. 
Now the hood and everything's up there, so I'm not gonna do shut, pull that down. Thanks. Yeah, that's the way I'm used to seeing them. Okay. Now. There you go. Flat <laughs> six. Flat six. And and it get wait, there's more. It's got mud tires on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that car fit right in in Ohio. It's got a uh, lawn service decal on the side of it. Is that that Jane Dirt's car? (laughs) Is that the one from Bullet with the 21 hubcaps that come with it? Yeah. (laughs) This this is actually, besides the, the decals, there's a car that sits about a block away from my folks' house. I'm not going to divulge where it is because I've asked about it 30 times. It's not for sale. Yeah. But it's setting it's setting under a tree. Yeah, and she keep is... Keep that a secret. Huh? Definitely want to keep that a secret. Well, it's 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 never going to be for sale. And to be honest, there's probably nothing left underneath of it. But uh, it's a black on black on black 68 Charger. 33 automatic car. Ooh. I used to watch it. I used to watch it run down the road in the 90s. That thing sounded sweet, but they had a Trans Am hood scoop on it. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get air in there somehow. Yeah, kind of like well, the shaker I mean, scoop. <laughs> you know, once that scoop came out on the car and then the movie Smoking a Bandit, everybody. Kind of jumped on that bandwagon for a while. Yeah, I, I, I that was probably when it was put on the car. But I've asked about it and asked about it. I've asked about it since the, probably the late nineties when I couldn't even really buy a car. Yeah. And uh, I, I ain't went over there probably ten years, but. Other Mopar guys know where the car is. Oh, yeah. You can't hide that car in it being in plain open sight. That's one of them yeah. legends that never die. It, one day, yep. somebody's, somebody, God forbid, I hope nothing happens to people, but somebody's going to die off. It's just a fact. And the car, somebody will catch the car at the exact right time, and it'll go down the road. Yep. yep. I know what I know what it's like for for people wanting your car that you drive all the time. Every time I go somewhere in my wagon, I got somebody wanting to buy it from me, and it's only a '95. It's nothing that special, but I keep it nice and clean, you know. It it is to us millennials. It's our childhood. Yeah, yeah. Just that being a wagon everywhere I go, and it shines. My wife even hates it used to hate to go with me when she could get in the car. Good. Every time we come out of the store, something would be a crowd of people around it. What a silly thing just for a station wagon, you know? <laughs> Bob, I'm still on big screen. Oh, okay. Well, we're, <laughs> we're checking the back cave for the dark cave. Hey, Dart, I found us maybe a future project soon. Oh, oh boy. I got to find you there, you how about a 68 Cornet wagon? There you go. Yeah. I, want one. <laughs> I, I found the file for it. I tried to buy one one time. I love she these station wagons. She wouldn't sell it. She took it and put a bit to put it. She took and put a big block in it. And four yeah. speed and drove the ah. wheels off that thing. Hey, Butch. Hey, Butch, have you built the 66 Chevelle wagon yet? It was her 69. I don't remember. I haven't talked to her in 15 years. Yeah, this one guy I follow on uh, uh, Colts, he has got a bunch of, you know, what we would consider oddball ish. They would, I mean, there's a demand for them, but not enough for the main, model manufacturers to step up. 
Well, like, I, there, you get on the eBay and you type in uh, 66 Dodge Dart model kit, there is a, Ford, there's a four door uh, little bitty like my car. Right. So my, somebody needs to scale that up. I'm just saying. We'll get the file. I mean, that's not a, I'll look back at his. There's so many, I can't remember all of them. But the highlights are that 68 Cornet Wagon, uh, a 67 two-door post Valiant, 68 Valiant, and a 70 Valiant, all two-door post. He does a four-door version of a couple of those. Um, the 67, uh, I'd want a four-door because then you could make dual. Yeah. Or Wait, that's not a 67. No, that was a newer one. That wasn't it. No, I think it's either 67, 68, or 69. Uh, FYI, I do have the file to do that truck from that movie. I don't, I don't do trucks because I don't have nowhere to put them. I've got one truck. Hell, I'll show you. I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> I got to look at that file because... It, the cab, you can print it in so many different ways. Oh, oh cab over. Yeah. Ah, nice. Um, but I see. Hey, Daniel, how are you this morning? I think I can print the sleeper by itself. If so, that'll be the sleeper I need for my 50 Chevrolet cab over tandem dual ramp truck I want to build next. That, that, by the way, that was the biggest pain in the ass. That sounds about right. Because the the numbers weren't on the on the sheet. Yeah, they were on the fucking. There was a fucking glossary over here, and I had to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, oh my god. You want to hear something really bad? They reissued it the exact same way. That that is the reissue. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've heard well, some people complaining about it. It's like, well, it was like that originally too. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, and I'll tell you the straight honest truth. There's parts missing off that thing for a reason. You know, you got but, a good kit when it tells you to cut off the locating pins to make things line up. In the, yeah. Uh, yeah. I usually do anyhow. Yeah, me too. Well, they don't put the locating pin and the locating hole in the right position to each other. Yeah, that are usually yeah. oil pans and stuff don't fit anyway. You got to make them flat to meet. <coughs> well, I've had I've only had that with one kit where they actually told you to cut the pins out yeah. the, on the instruction sheet. Like, man, this kit's so bad that it, it will not go together if you use use the pins. And iron on her kit. I tell you straight up front, cut the pins off. And there's the that problem. Most the people air don't air. read. <laughs> well, that's just it. You hear all these guys doing these reviews and complaining about all the flashing. You know, I'm looking at the instruction sheet. It tells you you're going to have to trim off some flash. There ain't a damn model made that's in plastic that compares to taking the flash off of a Hubley. Here, here's oh, my biggest one. Yeah. Not a Sorry. one. If you've built two or more Hubleys, I don't ever want to hear you complain about flash on a plastic one. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's my main. Uh, no, no shelf. Hubleys were always my favorite. Ah, I like. Them it, you, can, you know what it is? It's a kid. You can. My eyesight's fuzzy tonight, so I can't. The bridge of the Enterprise. Like, I, well, I was just about to say something about the Enterprise. <laughs> and and now that y'all made me go there and look, I found I, I have a Camaro over there too now. Damn it. <laughs> I think I've built two Hubleys and a Gabriel. Might be three hubblies, but I know I've had two. And the next buddy build we do, Don, I'm gonna make you yep. step out of your uh, your element. Oh no! Oh yeah! Oh no! Oh yeah! Oh no! 
You go, we gonna argue about it? Yeah. Wait, 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 let's let me, I mean, before I get too careful, wh how, where out of my comfort zone? <laughs> You're gonna build something Star Trek. Mm -hmm. My, my. I do that. Hon honestly, Don, it wouldn't be a bad thing. Most of their kits, there's a shit ton of variety. Damn Everything it. from small little fighters to big millennials and whatnot. So, yeah, there's there's a wide variety. And, now, and I can help you find the easier ones. Is it sci-fi or Star Trek? Star Trek. Specific. Okay, well then, yeah, there's still plenty out there. I mean, you could do a little runabout. It's got like 25 pieces and a fucking mm -hmm. one-foot square decal sheet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I've built like one. <laughs> like this one right here. If you, yeah, if you were to build this one without the interior, which I built interior, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and quite eight times two. That's that's the panels on it. Cool. So basically, just paint it and put it together. I got one of those. I'm gonna build it someday. It was fun. Do you got the interior tub with it? Uh, that sounds yeah, like it does. That sounds like what I've said about everything in this here room. See, Dart, I, I think if you went from Star Trek and just said sci-fi, it opened up a wider variety. You know, yeah. Star Trek, Star Wars. Uh, what the fuck was the other one? We, we don't we don't we don't talk about Star Wars. Space, space 1999, I think it was. Or well, those. The there's, reason there's I said plenty of other out there for you know for sci-fi. <laughs> well, the reason I said Star Trek specifically because I can lead him to either that or the original Enterprise, which are both easy fun kits. Mm-hmm. And I got three of those. You go that way, I can send you one of the Cadet Series kits. It's got like six parts to it. <laughs> Who was it? Uh, um, Chuck. He was just showing the pod racer the other day. I thought that would be kind of neat. <laughs> Here's my alternate universe enterprise. What's this here? Were you here that day I showed off my Enterprise? Nice. Nope. I did first contact. That was the E, wasn't it? Yeah. It's, I don't, it's I, don't I mean, I, I don't know that much about everything. All I know is I know that. But, but, oh, that's not what I want. I was going to get your juice out. No. I'm going to sign off in a minute anyhow. There, I ain't making no more noise again. Back for a little bit. <laughs> For a little bit. This is my enterprise. The so one I, I called those before, and I thought about it. I just had pulled the trigger. Well, yeah, this one, this one's done with without a base coat. It's just detail painted. This is the kit color, and I put the decals on and cleared over. Yeah, it's I got wallpaper to, decals on. The D, if you don't like decals, the D is not the kit to build. There you go, Bob. Let me share my uh, my first contact with Dart. He might like this. I don't know if he was here when he's when I showed it last time. You familiar with this one, Dart? What? I didn't know they made the E. Me either. Oh. And as you can see, this is just solid pieces. There, there really isn't. I mean, this is how many pieces there are total right here in one of these kits. So I actually ain't there. I need, right? I, I, need a, I need a pen. I need a pen. I need to write some shit down. Hey. See what I did with my little pin vise and drilled out all these freaking holes? Bye. Oh, I was about to ask because that's the one you lit up. This is the one I lit up. Mm. As you can see, I drilled all the holes. It's got two-tone primer, white pearl over it, and then the decals and everything else. 
Right there, I will can... not be doing that. <laughs> well, this this is just gray primer and darker gray primer. Everything was not about light. lighting it. Well, the lighting part inside this is one oh. 25 light double A battery string of Christmas lights to light up now, the whole thing. I'm gonna tell you something that needed to be in my in my bedroom. It makes a beautiful yeah. nightlight, without a doubt. <laughs> I <Yeah>. bet. <laughs> I was about to say, that'd make an interesting nightlight. But see, you can see it's got some decals. Pretty simple. They're nice and big. There wasn't anything super <laughs> small. And even this thing with a bunch of the bumps underneath laid down pretty simple. I mean, it wasn't that hard to build. Well, I cool. like the E because there's not a lot of aztec on it. Well, they do have an Aztec decal sheet for this one, a specific Aztec set. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, this is the basic decal. I mean, they're, the smallest shit on here is this line right here. <laughs> yeah. I wonder I wonder if you can buy that decal set new. I don't oh, I don't see the uh, model number. But so you know, there is this kit out there then. But I had got oh, it. Oh, I wrote it down. It, it's it? coming to the cave. Uh, <laughs> I got I got it. When I get off here, when, I'm I, telling you right now, when I get off here... I'm going to be on eBay. <laughs> I had got it for free from some guy. He had like eight, nine kits. There was that one. There was a Boeing radar, laser radar plane thing. It had the big round platform thing on, on the nose kind of. Mm -hmm. And then there was a Cuda and a couple of NASCAR and a truck and some other shit. And it was my girlfriend's friend. And he's like, he's got some models. So we went over to talk to him. And he, he's like, yeah, you want them? You can have them. I ain't going to build them. I'm like, yeah, bye. But she, being her friend, got first pick out of the bunch. And I got the, the shit left over. Well, <laughs> it was funny because she had this little stack of like seven cars. The two plane or the plane and the Star Trek one. She's like, you can have those. I ain't touching that. I'm like, that's fine. As long as I get one of these other ones <laughs> or whatever. And for like two months there was a 70 AAR Cuda sitting on her pile that she wouldn't let me have, right? And she wasn't about to start it because she had three other kits already started. And one day I just went and I grabbed the kit. I opened it up. I sprayed it yellow. I built it. I got it done. And she come home and she's like, you owe me a kit. I was like, yeah, probably. But you weren't going to build it anyway. <laughs> it was a 70 Cuda, man. I was like, yeah, you ain't going to keep that from me. I'm going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other the other one on my my we don't talk about shelf is uh, I think it's a sh the Star Trek ship Discovery, one of the newer shows that I haven't watched. Captain Janeway. No, I don't know. No, that's, it, it, that's if, if it's Discovery, it's Janeway, not. Discovery. It's the one with the pizza cutter looking front end. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's from Mobius, and I I it. My roommate bought it for me whenever she moved in. She's like, here, I brought you this gift from California. And I looked, I'm like, oh, thank you. And I started putting it together, and it pissed me off. And I, she's been here almost over a year now, and I still ain't built the damn thing. If I could find a small enough one, I don't want a big one, but I wouldn't mind doing Deep Space Nine. Ooh, you know, the ooh, big, stay there. The, don't move. The big Why station. Do I wouldn't big mind doing it. I just always thought that that kind of shape out in space as a hub, central gathering point. Kind of, yeah, that one right there. I just always thought that'd be badass, you know. Okay, okay. This is my favorite. Okay, everybody wants to know what my favorite model is in my in my space. Here it is. Deep Space Nine. Um, this 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 one was uh. Uh, molded and clear. Really? Yeah. And you That's can see cool. see how the big, you know, compared to my hand. It's about like, 14, it, 16 it, inches around, roughly, give or take. Uh, where's my a little hand? bigger than a ruler right across. Okay, hang on. This is While six you're inches. Hanging on, fellas, this is six inches, right? Jump out here. So six, so what's it say? Bye, Kevin. See Bye. Later, Kevin. Take care, Kevin. It's a foot tall. 
and about 14 18 inches long and yeah yeah that's not yeah. bad i mean i i can handle that because it's not like a very small thing in the first place you know well, this fucking thing is massive but to have it that size that ain't bad uh the decals if you you like to light your stuff this will be the kit for you but the decals for the windows and stuff suck no the only reason i lit mine was because I, otherwise i was never going to build that kit unless i did it even has a fiber optic kit to it if you want it you right. know in, in that first contact be sure to look for that there's kits with and without well you watch ds9 right on occasion i used to yeah yep every day okay there was two uh space stations, space stations. <laughs> yep. one the only seen once i forget what it was called but it was still uh cylindrical <laughs> no what what's the critter's name kardashians Kard kardashian Kardashian. Yeah. Yeah, it was still uh, all decked out in theirs, and it was dormant. And if you look, it's a different color than DS9. So like a more that means green if you pin to it or something. I can't, I can't remember what you called it. Uh, the, and they also did some flashbacks when, when DS9 was Terak North. And it's yeah. a different color. So I am going to be building a second... Well, that's cool as shit, man. Thanks for showing me that. If I was to ever I buy like, one, I think it's like fifty dollars. If I was to buy one on purpose, that would be the one I'd go for. Not that I'm going to, but if I was going to, that, that would be one I would look at. <laughs> ah, Bob, <laughs> we just had a wiener fly by. <laughs> wiener, 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 wiener. <laughs> The Enterprise. Yeah, see, I think Don oh, really? could build one like that. It's not super big, not a lot of parts. Pretty simple, basic. Plenty you can do to it, you know. I'll be honest with you. The two, I've built the original Enterprise. That was fun. Enterprise, the, the Enterprise refit, the decals are garbage, or at least mine were. Uh, that's Ooh. an interesting paint job on the base there, Bob. I've never built mine, so I couldn't tell you. That 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 is uh, the alternate universe Enterprise. Yeah, you took a little liberty with that one, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, the ISS Enterprise. It's an alternate awesome. universe. Yeah, it's got the got the uh, Im Imperial markings on it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Nifty. I haven't built that one. The C. Yeah, these are all the same scale. <laughs> it's funny to think that's the same scale. <laughs> yeah, they're all the same scale. Huh. Is that like 144 or something? 2,500. 2,500. Okay, yeah. 2,500. I mean, shit, even the real ones in the movie ain't much more than what? One two thousand, one five hundred, maybe at best. <laughs> They're big enterprises, uh, fourteen hundred. The big D kit is fourteen hundred. Yeah, but I'd imagine the movie theater ones are. Oh no, it was like six feet long. Yeah, the actual practical one, but then they went to CGI on all of them. Right. Put a bunch of See? people out of work doing that. <laughs> yeah. I need a board. You know, they, they put a bunch of other people in work too that were doing stuff that <laughs> took less time but took more skill to do. So. But I have the rest of the series. I just haven't built them yet. I have the uh, the, re, the refit, the A, uh, the NX01, uh, the B. It was like eight or eight, eight or ten kits in that series of the Enterprise that are all. I've got them all. I just haven't built them all yet. I built the big ones in the original. I haven't built the little ones yet. Did you ever build the first contact one? No, it's just the one up here. 
This is the only one I built was this one. Hmm. It's the same thing. This is a wallpaper wallpaper decals. You just paint it the I just painted it primer, primer gray, and then everything else is all decals. Right. The whole thing. Even the blue the blue uh tiller grills and everything, yeah. The SAR collectors, everything's all decals. The whole thing. Yeah, the big one I had, it had clear for all the tail fins, and you actually had to paint the insides of them. Same thing here. The only thing is the chiller grills and the facade collectors, the only thing that are paint other than the primer color. Everything else is all decals. I like that kind of soft bluish look on it. It looks good. I may have to let Don off and do one with Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think if you're calling the shots for what Don can build, Don gets to call the shots to get you out of your comfort zone to build something. Oh, that's not bad. I I've got a lot of Romulan Warbirds I still haven't built, too. One of the big Romulan, Romulan Warbirds. Nice. I got one of those it's over there. I don't want to get it down, but I built one. <laughs> I've got one that's built, and I got another one that's not built because I'm going to get rid of the bottom half of it and turn it into more of a scout vessel. Check this out. I've got this ongoing project. It's not done, but it's ongoing. Go back to multi-screen, Bob. Go back to dart. Is that the war? Yeah, I've got, one, I've got a couple of those, too. And, and everybody's like, which one is it? The one with the whale. <laughs> <laughs> So if you got the modern version of the kit, it works with the uh you can make the wings go up and down and nice design on the base. That's cool. That's all me. Come to the landing gear and all kinds of extra crap. Yeah, uh, I don't I and I understand it is not the proper Cleon color, okay? I couldn't find it into me as paint. Okay, there's spray paint. But it's good enough. I don't for me. think specific color matters because in person versus on camera is two different colors anyway. Looks great to me. Thank you. I've still got to do some detailing and some shadowing and some weathering. And, and I've got the Voyager. I've got uh, oh, what's the, other one? Uh, the Reliant. I've got both of those built already. They're hanging in the other room. Okay, I'm done now. When those came out in the 90s, I got every single one. <laughs> you ain't done yet, man. I still see tractor beams and shit going on. <laughs> so I'm not blowing it up, okay? <laughs> you don't have to. My mind is doing it for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I watched it enough to know how it goes. Just, just think how old this is in canon compared to this one. This one would rip that one apart. Our shields in are canon. down. <laughs> And I built Deep Space Nine. And I built all of them at least once uh, when I was younger. No, listen here, don't you fall down. The only ones I didn't have dead was the Vulcan uh, shuttle, and I didn't, never did do the runabout. But I want the the I mean, I need to catch up with the rest of it. I want to build a board cube, but I don't think they make one. No, well, that's where you save all your sprues, save all your old sprues, and uh. I've seen them made uh, out of a milk crate, and they start gluing those sprues on the outside. Yeah, all you need is a million gribbles. Gribble. Yeah, it's, uh, that's how they built the real one. It's just all sprue trees. They just just a million gribbles stuck on the side. I mean, you got thousands of model car parts you can throw on there. The guy that bought my Enterprise from me when I was done, the lit it up. Oh, all this. He wanted me to send him a bunch of stuff that he can make. Cut up chunks of sprue and glued it onto a box, onto, onto a milk crate. Or actually, they used an acrylic box, a clear acrylic, made a clear acrylic crew, uh, cube, and then glued all them on, just glued sprue on it. And then they drilled holes where they wanted the green light to come through. That's how they built the studio model. You sure? a picture of this somewhere. Sure. Four cube. Yep. yep. 
Yep, that's exactly how they did it. I mean, of course, at, at ILM, they got cases upon cases upon cases of that stuff, so they could do it right away. But yeah. Well, now we're going. Now we're going to the trash. That's how they did it. If I can find this picture of some stuff that I sent a guy that he used as Greeble stuff, it'll blow your mind because most of it's just car parts. And it's all, all stuff you end up with multiple of once you've built a few kits. Now, people go through like the Battlestar Galactica uh, screen grabs and they go through and say, well, that part is this one. That, this part was that. Because the whole thing was built using tank parts to me a tank parts. Okay, from now on, I'm gonna put this under here. Instead of putting them in the trash, I'll put them in that little box. Actually, we're gonna use this box because it looks dirty. Okay, yeah, I think these are it. Let me share this here real quick, Bob. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Whoa, don't clutch your leg off, you dummy. Like I said, this is just a small pile of junk parts that I had access to. We got like fuel injected turbo type looking pieces, air cleaners, Lindbergh V6 parts, some square or flathead stuff, supercharger stuff, some side fire. <laughs> These are from tanks. These are A arms from a Corvette, a little freaking jet thingy, a couple of freaking Mopar underhood pieces. Nothing special. These are all just these are even Hot Wheel parts down here in the bottom. <laughs> and everything right. else is just connected by tubes and make it look like it's there for a reason kind of shit. You know, this is the cowl of a car. <laughs> you know, ain't nothing special in any of this stuff. So you but built one, what you're telling? No, the, the guy that bought the Star Trek from me, he wanted more parts. So that he could add them on to his build, and then when he spray painted everything, it would just look like greebles on a spaceship. You know, because I mean, when you look at it, you're like, okay, this is some kind of venting tubular system that goes from one place of the ship to another, right? Unlike with the the Enterprise, where it's all smooth surface, you take something like the Millennium Falcon, and there's stuff all over that thing. Yeah, I watched uh, uh, Savage. Jimmy Savage, yep. Jamie, yep. Adam Savage Adam watched Adam him. Savage, yep. Watched him build uh, that scratch little spaceship wing and stuff. Yeah. It's funny. One of the games I play, Trail Makers. They have mm -hmm. a, a, a space update, and one of the parts is just called Greeble. <laughs> it's got a whole bunch of different bumps and levels and tubes and things on it, but it's just one block, and you can add as many or wherever you want them. Because <laughs> it's for the spaceships. <laughs> right. Here you go, Don. I'm listening, guys, but I'm over here being a masonry. Okay. Hey, Don, you want to throw Dart for a loop? Uh. Tell him he's got to build something steampunk. <laughs> oh, good grief. <laughs> uh, I, I, I yeah, can tell I you, I've, I've seen some elegant freaking steampunk stuff, man. Now, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on a. Back, back the train up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think if he's gonna, you're gonna stretch him out of his comfort zone. I think it's only fair. <laughs> May, if it's a kit, I'm good to go. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have that many tools. <laughs> Actually, where's my oddities? My my dad, he does uh, metal detecting, right? And for Christmas one year, rather than buying him a gift, I made him one. Here, let me share this here, Bob. This is this is actually pretty badass. This is kind of steampunk. Let 
my he he's about six inch five and a half six inches tall and this is all car model parts i don't know if there's a i don't know if you can name any of these parts in particular but he's kind of, he's kind of steampunk these are 59 cadillac rims because like i said he does metal detecting right mm -hmm. so i went the steampunk route because he likes these little figures and folk art and weird things like this right so instead of this guy being a metal detector he's a steampunk era mine sweeper <laughs> so this has got like you know if it detects the mines or whatever and but there's little rams on here. I think both of these are like glue tips, you know, for the tester's glue bottles. <laughs> this belly piece is from a 96 Impala SS. <laughs> there's his back. Got some little tubes and hoses on them. And this is a freaking water bottle thing, I believe from one of the Fords, maybe. Might might have been from a Chevy truck. I don't remember one of the two, but it's all just little parts. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that was kind of neat. Well, okay. Be right back. Okay, that makes that makes two of us. I'm gonna go pay a water bill. <laughs> And I've built bikes and I've built ships and boats and I don't know what I have. I haven't built tanks, so I'll admit I have not built a tank. And I don't think I've built any military ships, even though I do have one. And I have a railroad or a, a train, railroads, a locomotive. <laughs> I just like my cars and my show rods. That's that's my my personal favorite. Oh, I feel lighter now. Drop you, the took kick the you took a shit that quick? No. Nah. <laughs> I was just that pee so bad. Like pretty good progress, and I still ain't run out of block. That's a good sign. Is that still your display case wall thing you're building? Yeah, yeah. It's uh looks See, like you got the... water damage. <laughs> is, yeah, that from the, but... is that from the glue or did you do that on purpose? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm not being real neat with it because it's not to be a pristine wall. Right, right. You gonna do some graffiti on it or something? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do some kind. Of, I got a, you know, you know, I'm like most of us, got a bunch of these damn Coca Cola decals. Oh God, yeah. So I see a Coca Cola, a weathered Coca Cola banner in this near future. No, uh, but you cool. see all the clean ones? They're the happy yeah. blocks because they just got laid. <laughs> Lucky them. Yeah. Now, That's now you nice. just made Jeff jealous. <laughs> 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 I heard you tell them that at the end of the street. I thought it was funny. <laughs> We'd have to make some smaller ones so they'd be midget blocks. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Then you make Mike jealous. <laughs> well, I've got some. Uh, I've got a um, file to print. Um, you know, like red brick uh, wall sections. I want to play with that uh, here soon. What is? I've got a gas station uh, that um, black box done. You know, two gas pumps, some brick wall sections, a uh, entry door. There's a uh, ice, uh, one of them ice boxes. Box. You know, buy bags of ice out of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's got a bunch of bunch of little things. It's pretty cool. Um, I've had some problems printing the wall sections. They want to they want to bow up on me. I've always thought that Texaco gas station kit was pretty cool. I've seen quite yeah. a few people build that. The only thing I didn't like about it was the lifts were, the lift was too old. It was just two big-ass I-beams on a hydraulic cylinder. 
Well, if you think for the gas station age, it wasn't too out of era. Yeah, yeah, it was accurate there. It's just, you know, I was wanting to use it as like a retro shop. Right. You seen Hollywood Hot Rods place? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, you know, he's it, his is kind of like a, the front set, front side is like an old gas station. Um, I got some ideas of doing some of that kind of stuff as a back again for background. People, are like, oh, you gonna do a diorama? Hell no. There's too many little parts to deal with to make it look right. Right. I mean, I've considered it, but still. Uh... One thing to keep an eye on is the Walmart discount section around Christmas time when they got all the mini figures and the, not the houses really, but the little people that go with it. Yeah. Sometimes you can get like a mailbox or a little sitting bench or, you know, little, little details that are, not seasonal specific, <laughs> you know? right? Pick well, up like a buck fifty, two bucks, you know. Oh, oh that, I know. Uh, I've had a couple of the rolls of the the regular brick, the flagstone, where it's more like cobblestone almost. I yeah. even had two of these massive sheets that are like eighteen inches by three foot long. One of them actually covers my desk off to the left. I, I don't cut on it because I know if I did, this thing would be chewed to shit. But because <laughs> all I got is a three quarter board, you know, it's like two foot by seven feet long. But this, this kind <clears throat> of plywood, you know. Well, that's a um, friend of mine. Um, he got, he's got some rolls of red brick. Oh. Um, is for train layouts and Christmas stuff. Mm -hmm. I told him, I said, when you get done, let me know what's left. If there's any, I've been interested in it because he bought it at one of them like dirt cheap places. Yeah. You know, close out place and he bought everything they had. Damn straight. Yeah. I've, I've ended up with like three or four of them rolls of the brick and a couple of the rock looking shit. And yeah, when I was doing doll houses, I wanted to, cut one of them rolls of brick in half lengthwise and wrap the whole bottom of the house in brick like they did back in the 70s. Right, right. You know, and then just siding from there up. Yep. <clears throat> I know the ex I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. Mm -hmm. I always like that look. Well, I mean, it's architecturally neat. It's better than just mm -hmm. slab side, you know. <laughs> Especially when you live in the projects and that's all they are is like 40 of them in one circle. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I well, live in the projects. <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, yeah, me too. Got to live where you can rent, man. <laughs> I remember mom and I, we lived in the Jacksonville Housing Authority's a, a place. And um, we were in the last apartment on the right. And it, the, the road dead ended, you know, at our parking spaces. And then there was a little, like a six foot little hill. And then from there back was the Jacksonville City Cemetery. And uh, of course, Jacksonville, the cemetery had not used uh, maybe, maybe half of the real estate they had for the cemetery. Right. So the backside, of course, was all woods. You know, they hadn't cleared it or nothing. And uh, I used to go out there and do some agricultural work. Help help, kind of make ends meet type thing. I was going to say, was that the sticky stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, see, you know, the city of Jacksonville is also home to the Jacksonville State University. Which means... And Income. <laughs> yeah, I mean that place held like seven thousand students. Uh, you know, and probably sixty percent of that was from way out of state. So they had mom and daddy's money, but really didn't know anybody. All right. <laughs> and back then we had fraternity row. About a ten, about like around ten o'clock on a Friday, Saturday night. I would 
park across the street and just go frat house to frat house. And when I got down to the uh, uh, Red Rooster, Don had all the bill money for the month, and I wasn't but 16 years old. <laughs> and couldn't hardly walk because I drank so much, and it was all free. That was one thing me and my brother always argued about. He was a drinker, and I was a pothead. And he was like, man, you got to quit all that freaking drugging and stuff. I'm like, mine pays for itself. Tell me how many beers you got to sell before you can drink for free. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, think about it, right? How many yeah. fucking beers you got to sell out of a 12-pack for what price before you can drink for free? <laughs> and still get so freaking lit up. I could sell one bag for 25 bucks, get high with the person, and not pay a penny. <laughs> That well, that was, and that was the thing about, you know, um, I didn't fare too well with the ladies in high school, you know, that I went to school with, because, you know, I, I, I was, I was, a I was a large young man, and fat boys wasn't in style then. Feel like. Um, but the college girls, they kind of liked us a little bit on the thick side. And then when you carried what I carried... Yeah, right. <laughs> they were the most picky because they all put on their freshman twenty. Yeah, it's not what you know; it's who you know, and who you know has what. <laughs> That's like my junior year there at Jacksonville, uh, Jacksonville uh, High School. Uh, my homeroom teacher, uh, oh, she 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 was a jaw dropper. I mean, all of us boys had to leave homeroom with our notebook in front of us. And uh, I actually run into her at a wet t-shirt contest at Brothers Bar. And, and and I tried to work that into my favor, but she really wouldn't go there. But a couple months later, when she got her uh, uh, teacher's aid from the college, yeah, home run! <laughs> and she also happened to be my... Um, uh, Miss Dixon was also my geography uh, teacher. Didn't do so good the first semester of high school in geom geography, but after the uh, student aid from the college came in, I did just fine. And she liked to she liked to smoke and do other things, so it really worked out well. I used to love it. It's been almost 20, well, almost coming up on 21 years now. I don't miss it. The only thing I regret from that time, I should have kept my ass in Jacksonville instead of moving to Atlanta. I didn't realize how good of a low-key, low-exposure cash cow I had. I had to move off to the big city and, and do all that and then really got into stupid shit. Yeah, my problem was I was the number one go-to guy between me and the big guy I got it from. <laughs> that meant everybody knew me. Which is why I do not have a cell phone. <laughs> Back then, if I would have had a cell phone, that fucker would have rang 24-7. My sleep would have been irrelevant to people. Because, yeah, you know, the ringer would have run, run the battery down, huh? Well, you know how the self-centered people don't give a fuck about, oh, you were sleeping? Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking 340 in the morning. What bar's already closed? Why are you calling me now? Because I want to get bored. <laughs> you know? You should have thought about that shit about 10 o'clock. Well, they, they had some at midnight. <laughs> they say yeah. you should have been a little more conservative. Yeah, it got well, to the point thing. where it was too many people knew far too much, and everybody from one moment to the next, somebody was always at the house, overlapping between they show up and the next one leaves or whatever. Yeah, it's kind of hard to convince them boys in blue that uh, I I have a lot of friends. 
<laughs> yeah, explain why your friends show up at 2 a.m., 4 a.m. That's like our local bootlegger back in the 70s. Um, the PD said they could never catch him. Now, you got to take this in, 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 in the whole story. He lived on a dead-end road <laughs> alongside Highway 411, and his backyard was about 110, 120 feet above the Coosa River. You know, he really didn't have any running, where to run, but yet they said they couldn't catch him. <laughs> In the fall on a Friday night, there was more lights beaming through the trees up his dirt road than it was on Megan Boulevard, the main strip through town. <laughs> But they couldn't figure out what he was up to. I ain't saying there was anybody crooked. I mean, you just, you know, you, you go by what I said and go from there. <laughs> Draw your own conclusion. <laughs> it was a different time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What was funny, my dad and a friend of his had a gas station about three miles north of, of that place on Highway 411. This was a dry county at the time. And the local PD just walked into the gas station, straight to the back room, opened up the cooler, and uh -huh. magically found the beer that quick. <laughs> a six-pack. And they got popped for bootlegging. Uh -huh. I ain't saying nobody told on them, but I think somebody told on them. I know when I got busted, somebody told on me. The cops oh, came yeah. and they, they said, we know what you have and we know where it's at. And I said, okay, well, prove it. Tell me where two items are at. If you're correct, I'll let you go. And they said, this is right here and this is right here. And I said, well, that was right there about an hour ago. Now it's somewhere else. But you're right. So I guess you got me over a barrel. So they came in, got their shit, didn't expect a few other things they found, and I went and served my year in prison, and after I got out, it was about a year later, I got, I quit, and still had a year of probation to go, and been clean ever since. Well, all I know is I've been sitting over here trying to figure out why there's a ghost in my house, because I have a I have a Goodyear blimp blow up hanging from the roof, and it's moving. There's a wind current. Did you and not? I, no. And did, I moved my heater. <laughs> I moved my little space heater, and it's still no. I'm it's still moving. So I turned that off. Let's see if it stops moving. I was going to say, hot air rises, causes current. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a situation I got in over in Georgia. Is I know who ratted at me. I know who ratted me out. Um, just never could find a little bastard. Um, but they jumped the gun and didn't catch me with the weight they thought they were going to catch me with. So it wasn't too bad a deal on my part. That and a little envelope to the judge and a little envelope to the DA. And I went from staring at uh, a 12-year stretch to just, uh, just under five and good, with good behavior and a couple other things. I was out the door in 29 months. <laughs> you know, it's really oh, sad. It turned it off guys, and quit moving. Half of the guys I used to get my shit from, they'd get arrested, barely do six months probation. You know, and a fine. I get busted one time with just shy of a pound. Many of it weighed up and a scale. And I served a year in prison with two on paper. Yep. Well, well I didn't, they kept coming and asking all these I didn't damn do questions. none of that shit. <laughs> they, they come in, you know, they're asking this question, that question. I, was, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I said, that was personal consumption. Uh, Mr. Piggott, I said, I'm serious, that was personal consumption. 
course, it's kind of funny. I get busted. They find four kilos. I go to trial, and it was just a tick over a kilo. Hmm. Said, well, apparently Atlanta PD, they got the party really good for my dime. Somebody did. And I'm telling you, see, they, they got it before it got to go to the ladies. So it was really, really, really good. On that note, <laughs> I am going to get out of here and go watch some TV. Okay. Don't, don't forget to go shopping for that first contact. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I, let me rephrase that. I'm going to get out here and watch TV and look at eBay at the same time. <laughs> what he's going to do, he's going to listen to the TV and shop. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are probably going to be on the TV while I shop. Yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, well, if you find a model kit of the board ship, let me know. That would be pretty badass. <laughs> well, there, there's, there's, there's two model kits that are not cars that I want. One is the board cube, and one is the Power Rangers Megazord. I know that's weird, but nah, to me, that ain't weird. I'm surprised they don't have a Voltron kit. But then again, it was a toy, so you know. <laughs> well, they do make the Megazord kit. It's just a hundred, almost two hundred dollars. <laughs> Dark, yeah. that's, Dark that's I fun. don't judge. People build what they want to build, and I think it's cool as hell. Right. I mean, honestly, that can't be any different than the uh, Gundam. In a I way, I think it's the I same mean, thing, but I don't yeah, know what I mean, a Gundam it's, is. Well, it's a robot, a mech. Yeah, you yeah, know, that's basically what the Megazord automated is. Automated machine, you know, it's a mech. <laughs> and the the Dragon Zord is exactly that. A, a mech dragon. Yeah. So. <laughs> but all right, guys, I'm gonna like get it. off here and go go shopping. Have all right, one, man. Yeah, all right, brother, you have a good one. Bye. 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 When you see, you might not want to shop around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I buy anything, I'll chat. I'll hit you in chat. <laughs> Sounds good, man. <laughs> Looks like that dragon that Bob just finished up. I mean. That's not my thing, but I thought it was really cool and got me thinking about one. Whether I yeah, pull the yeah. trigger or not, that's a whole other deal. I you would know, look right? around calls because I think there is a 3D file to do that, 3D print that thing instead of having to do the vinyl. Which yeah, if I I've seen, do over again, I'd have rather had a 3D printed one than, a, than the vinyl. Yeah, I, I got to looking on there. I looked at a bunch of dragons and like Butch. He's in a lot of that stuff too. Um, that damn predator he's doing right now, he's printing his. Oh insane. god, that thing is fucking wicked, man! Both heads with and without uh -huh. the Oh, dude, you one ugly motherfucker. <laughs> he sent me a picture. <laughs> I love that. Where line. he just laid the tail out on the plate on the, uh, in the slicing file, and his plate's the same size as mine. He sent me a picture, and I'm looking at this thing going, my. Hell, where's it end? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that tree that he printed out? That thing oh, man. Wicked, man. I know there's a file to do the life size space hugger from from aliens. Hmm. Well, he's, he shared a file of the Predator's head that I'm going to play around with. Oh. I'm with. I mean, I've seen a couple of the Predator movies and I liked them. I liked them. I liked them a lot. You're but a it's not it's a movie, why not? <laughs> it's really, I'm not much into sci fi per se, but I find some of the characters and so on cool, right? And like getting that predator ahead, I'm gonna play around with it on my computer and I will print up some size of it for myself. Um, because I like shit like that in the shop, just to people looking around and and you know, it's car, 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 skull. Wait a minute, what kind of skull? Right. You know, yeah, little conversation pieces, you know. Exactly. That's just like this. Oh, it's right behind me. It's like this dude right here. The Red Baron. Uh, well, yeah, see this. He is, but he isn't. <laughs> right. This, the file that I got, that I printed this from, 
was the size of an air filter for a 26 25th scale model car i just enlarged him right you know uh, i've had to i've slicked him out he's I've done done the body work. He's ready for paint if I get off my lazy ass and actually paint him. <laughs> I've seen Mark has his all of his desk and everything all set up, but now he's got to take it all back down because he just got carpet. <laughs> he's like, man, that means everything that's on the floor has got to go so we can put the carpet down. But give him a couple more days. He'll be in here hanging out with us again. Well, I'm hoping by fall that I'm going to I mean, I'm not going to pick out a specific pattern. I'm going to go over to Dalton Flooring just a few blocks from me uh, and pick out some vinyl. The floor in here is covered uh, with that old press board they make at IKEA furniture out of. MF or MDF? No, it ain't even that good. <laughs> it's so like a particle board. All fiber sawdust board. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it's got that wood grain laid over it. Well, I've discovered they didn't design that that stuff to have a office chair roll across it for 10 years. Right. And I wore the wood pattern off right where I'm sitting right now. And my chair and the wood don't get along. <laughs> so I'm gonna take some of the some of this bondo on that and I'm gonna clean the seams up a little bit. I want to flop some vinyl to make my chair roll better. Yeah, I Dad's, like, Yo. Dad's like, y'all put carpet in there. I was like, hell no. I have a hard time finding parts on this slick floor. What's up, Red? <laughs> I know that feeling. I got shiplap on mine for flooring, and there's a gap in between each one, so if I lose a small part, I got to look in that gap. <laughs> yep. I, also, I also have a piece of rug under my chair. Because otherwise, the wheels would beat the frick out of that wood. And it still does. It's just not as bad because of the, the rugs. You know? But if I didn't have the rug, my tires would get stuck in them grooves everywhere. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem I had. I had to go get a, you know, a mat, office mat. Right. My well, dad's like, he's talking about, hey, y'all do this, y'all do that. I said, Dad, this is a damn... Uh, 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 Nothing. It's just a little place for me to play my toy cars. This isn't the Taj Mahal. Right. Uh, it's just a room. <laughs> you know. Uh, the money, I said, I said, hell, the money you're talking about having to spend, I said, I got three or four more printers. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I need them. Um, I'm fixing to back off on that a, little, a good bit, actually. Consuming too much time and ain't turning enough money. Yeah, it's like Butch said. Normally, I only build one thing at a time, but since I got a printer, I got multiple projects rolling. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then what's he do? He gets a second one. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Well, you know, I'm playing around with this and dealing with people. Well, I found out I'm not a people person. Like, I, well, I always thought I, I knew, kind of knew I was. I never have been. <laughs> I'm just not a people person. Well, since the printer, I've discovered I'm really not a people person. I mean, I'm going to help out friends and, you know, as long as I can keep, as long as it'll pay for resin and a few files here and there, I'm good. I want to enjoy the thing. What's up? Go for it. Yeah, I was thinking earlier during either Jeff's stream or earlier, whatever it was, but with everybody printing out 3D printed rims and tires, right? And the way like AMT went back to the Craftsman series because everybody was printing out frames and all their own suspension detail shit. Yep. Do you think at some point they're just going to go back to slot car bodies and call it good? <laughs> you know, you know I ain't saying they wouldn't do it. Um, you know, I mean, it's kind, of, it's, it's kind of crazy to think, you know, I mean, they removed the lettering off the tires on the Ravel kit because they don't want to pay the copyright any longer for like good, right? So that saved them a few bucks. 
So the next logical sense to save a few bucks is not put tires in the kit and make you go buy your own. From yeah. Out. You know? Well, say on top And then that. AMT already sells aftermarket wheels and tires with pad printing on them, like the dragster slicks and stuff like that, yeah. right? Or the white wall set or the polyglass. Red lines and the waste masters and all that stuff, yeah. Yeah. So why put them in the kit if they want you to make money and they don't want to spend money? So don't put them in the kit. Make you buy the aftermarket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, just, so that was one of the biggest things, you know, having the printer. I wanted to be able to do tires because, you know, there's still a gap in the 25th oh, scale yeah. tires. Yeah, there ain't enough VF good wrenches out there, which were like the most common in the 90s. Yeah, see, I've got the BF Goodrich in 205 70 15, 235 60 15, and 295 50 or 295 60 15. The common size from that era. Right. Um, I've got the Mickey Thompson uh, Formula Ones. You know, uh, what, here's a thought for you because I like the. Uh, Hardcastle and McCormick, the Coyote, the red car. Right? Yeah. MPC has the kit. It's a pizza kit, if you ask me. It yeah. doesn't go together very well. Whatever. I've seen people, you know, on like uh, Coffin Corner or certain other pages where they molded their own tires, but they have the Goodyear on the outside with the BFDs for the tread pattern. Right? Yeah. So they, they resin they made them and then resin casted them and then they have a set of four wider and smaller. I would love a set of like a 275, 50, 55, or 60, 15 inch rim set of BFG back tires, you know, to go with the AMT commonplace BFG front tires, right? You know what I mean, or even other than the Baldwin Motion 70 and a half Camaro a wider version of that Indy Firestone or uh, Mickey Thompson. Yeah. Know, with, the, with the dog bone pattern. Yep. I would love a set of those because I've always wanted a set of those on a real car. Rather than were those, or not, it didn't matter to me. <laughs> yeah. I've got that Mickey Thompson all the way up to take it. It'll, it'll, um, it'll go up to, it'll accept up to a 14 inch wide wheel. Nice. I've got Let's see, I've got the B of Good Riches, I got Dunlop Qualifiers, I got the Mickey Thompson Formula Ones, um, I've got the um, Scat Pack or Scat Track tires. That would be awesome, Red. I totally agree. That would be freaking awesome. What's that? An app where you just put in the tread pattern, size, sidewall, and it automatically creates an SDL file, grab it, print it. That oh my goodness! Awesome. No, yeah, that's awesome. Oh, unless you got a printer, trust me, you'll forget about <laughs> sleep. <laughs> yeah. If you got my imagination, which I'm pretty sure you do, <laughs> yeah, I agree, Red. roughly. <laughs> you know, I will admit though, the 3D printed tires are a lot nicer than taking your chance on a set of resin ones. Yep, because the resin you only get like three quarters of the tire and usually the inside of it you need to do a lot of work you know that's i'm still working on that i mean my my 3d tires are looking good uh, i mean unless you, unless you make a two-piece mold it's flat yep you know because the resin flattens out at the top <laughs> you know well i have managed to oh and it took a lot of damn practice <laughs> and, and experimenting but I can print just about any width tire now without getting a flat spot or if I do it's really really subtle Mine. and it's on the it's on the sidewall as it meets the tread pattern and I, I, that's been kind of inconsistent so I'm still kind of chasing that <coughs> but um, the couple of guys that's, that's come by here and got them like that I'm like, you just put that at the top inside. Yep. Bury it. But <laughs> I still have I still have this desire to no matter what tire I print, it can be used on a uh open um 
a fenderless car. Right. You look all the way around it. That's, <clears> got, <throat> that's got to do with my picky quality bullshit. Well, see, there's there's plenty of these renderings out there that I've wanted to build a model of, and they do have that open wheel look, like right. the little like the little Toyota mini truck with an Indy car, you yep. know, to where you do the old Chevy off road truck thing where you shrink the grill and you bend the fenders in. Yep. And then you got the Indy car front suspension on it that the tires are outside of that. Slam yeah. super low, big nose wing on it massive roll cage motor in the box you know yep. to me i just thought that was just a badass design choice you know and, and they did the same thing with the 53 to 56 ford truck pull yeah. the fenders off of it slam it down make an indy car you know that to me i just think is freaking wild because when you see indy car f1 you know that motherfucker is quick off the line through the corner in and out braking just fucking wicked but yet it's got this massive 4,000 pound body on it, <laughs> you know? Well, so that's, and that's why my focus has been more, I mean, I've gotten distracted with some engine parts and other things, but my focus, and I'm trying to get it back there, wheels and tires and brakes. That's like a file I got this morning. It's got the Buick brake drum, you know, from your traditional old hot riders. Right, right. But then it's got just like, uh, like I said, it's a um, generic rear brake drum. Yeah, like you said, a ten or an eleven inch drum. Yeah. Right. You know that way you can the wheels you can see through. So, say you're doing that seventy six Camaro with the air shocks, and you got the N fifty fifteens. Well, you need an orange brake drum to go, a red brake drum to go behind it. Yeah, or any of my big boat cars. They all had rear drums. Yeah. Look, any car up to the 80s had rear drums. <laughs> exactly. And say with the 3D printer, uh, say the file prints it to the size you need for a Camaro. Works great. But then I can go back in there and I can enlarge it where it could be a good brake drum for the back, the rear of a mid-70s Ford truck, Chevrolet yep. truck, Dodge. Right. Yeah, because the backing plates were slightly different. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, never understood how, like, in the uh, George Barris a la carte, the truck, right? As a, as a show rod, yeah, you would want to jack it on blocks and take one of the tires off so you can show the chrome drum in the back, right? Yeah. Why did they only put one fucking drum in the kit? <laughs> <laughs> I got three of these drums. Because I got three different kits that had one in each kit. <laughs> exactly. It's like, what in the fuck? <laughs> you don't supposed to take one wheel off. Well, that's what I mean. That's that's what it's for, right? So you yeah. can have it at an angle or whatever to one side. So, yeah, you can see under there, but you get the tires on the other side, you know, so you can see with or without. But I just thought it was weird. I mean, because the way they mount on the axles, you don't use them. But if you want to swap it, then you got to use it, the, the stock one on one side and then the chrome on the other. Yeah. You know, so it's like, well, what the fuck? And then if you put the rim on it without a backer in there, it sticks out further. <laughs> yep. It's like, what the fuck? Well, as, as some of the things I'm working on to do with the printer is accessorizing. Um, yeah, there is some 3D bodies that I'm going to do, but it's more for personal and some friends. Right. Um, first of all, you're not going to sit here and run print bodies with a printer and think you're going to make any money. Right. That 77 Thunderbird I printed took 11 hours to print one body. Damn. I, I still think a resin printed body, or not printed, but a resin cast body, if they get them not super thick, to me, is good. As but someone they, would have when, when they did the printer version of Corvette Summer, you get the back half of the Corvette, and then you get the nose separate. So yeah. That I can see in a two-piece deal. That's not bad. You know. But, yeah, but if you're going to do the whole fucking time. body of the thing, that's that's going to take fucking forever. <laughs> well, so that's uh, the, the guy that actually owned, that bought this printer. 
Um, he's been showing some interest about doing hand casting. I said, well, and, you know, that's one of the things he got this printer was to get some of the odd bodies that, you know, the manufacturers ain't never going to get us a kit for them. Um, I told him, I said, well, and I think this is a, probably a pretty good idea. Print the master body. Right. You know, do whatever adjustments, clean it up, you know, making it nice and smooth. Uh, That'd be your master. That's where 3D printer will be very handy towards that. Yeah, rather than carving out a wooden block. <laughs> right. I mean, if I if it takes me 12 hours to print the master body, how long is it going to take you to carve one? <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> so, really? Um, well, well, you also got to consider how much time it would take you to create the file to print it if it wasn't already pre existing. You know what I right. mean? Right. So, I mean, comparatively, time wise, I think it would be faster in CAD simply because those who know what they're doing, like Miguel, he can build a body in a few hours on Blender. You know? Right. And then it's just printer time, whereas carving it out of block, yeah, you're you're taking hours just to get the rough shape. <laughs> well, so that was like, and he, like Sammy and I were talking, you know, um, like one of my projects I would like to do. <coughs> Is take the roof, uh, and the whole the whole roof from the cowl all the way back from that sixty three wagon, and graft it into one of these sixty six novas, and have right. a sixty six nova wagon. Right. There's gonna be that's a lot of body work time. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I know exactly because oh. in on Facebook there's a page called Scale Model Restoration or scale model revival, something like that, that I'm a member of. And, you know, you get these old Joe hand kits or it's missing eight pillars or two door to four door swaps and shit where they cut that whole notching it out, swap roofs and swap quarter panels and all kinds of crazy shit. It's yep. like, I, I could see doing it, but I'd rather not. <laughs> you know? Well, that's like I told him, I says, that's one of the things that's holding me up on doing that that Nova wagon, the '66 wagon, is I would like copies of it. I mean, personally, one and done, I'm good. But I know right. people that would, you know, they pay a fair pay a fair price for it. Well, it is it is kind of crazy how wagons were kind of like a fad in the in the old days. Like we said, it's a family car. And then all of a sudden they became a big thing with demolition derbies. And you yep. never seen another wagon until the Magnum came out. And even to this day, now you get like a Cadillac or a Porsche offspring of a wagon wannabe type thing. But there aren't enough actual commonplace kits out there like a Nova wagon or the 66 Chevelle wagon. That's one thing. Or... You know, the old AMT wagon, which honestly, that kid's kind of lame, but it was in a wagon, you know. Right. And if you're a, into the demo derby, those are your number one go-to kits, man. They got a wagon, <laughs> you know. Right. Well, well unless you're a, a factory stock drag racer, they raced wagons, <laughs> you know. Well, that's what I was telling Sammy. I was just, um, I was to think about the wagon. Uh, the hot rodders like it. The customizers like it. The light commercial people like it. I mean, face it, there's a place for it in many, many facets. Way many, yeah. Oh, uh, because like I found a file for a 1979 Malibu four door hardtop. Okay, give me that. <laughs> and he was like, oh, hell yeah. Damn uh, straight. See, he's a. Um, well, now he's a 911 dispatcher up in uh, Geraldine, but he also worked with the volunteer fire department, you know, EMTs and stuff like that. And at one time they had one of them four door Malibus. He said it was probably the best one, the best fastest car they had as far as getting to the scene. And it drove nice because I mean, it's yeah. just a G body. They float. <laughs> exactly. I said, yep. I says, and, you know, there's uh, a group out of uh, Kentucky, 
Um, they got a fab shop, chassis shop called Ten, uh, Ten Soldiers. One of their house cars is a four-door Malibu called Charlie Brown. <laughs> and back Charlie Brown, Brown is back in the chassis shop right now going through a uh, crash diet course. <laughs> Losing some weight. <laughs> Yeah, those things. I mean, it was a nasty car to begin with. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how she is when he's when they get done with the, the current rebuild. I mean, the car already run five forties in the eighth. You know, the only Malibu kit that I know of is the El Camino and the one thirty two Snap kit. Yep. And exactly. I, I do know that. Uh, uh, what the hell is his name? And, uh, red line resins. I know he makes a four door Malibu or a two door Malibu. He, he makes some badass shit. John Wiley, I think his name is red line resins. He's been a member of one of my groups for like way before I was the admin of it, but he's posted a lot of the stuff he's built, you know, a lot of drag cars, a lot of two door conversions, a lot of, a lot of stuff that people have been wanting for decades <laughs> you know. well you remember uh randy frost sounds familiar i'm not gonna say uh, i know for sure but can't remember the name of his tim resin company it was back in the 90s um he had a 79 80 malibu to the hard top and everybody oohed not about it i got a hold of one and it was a heartbreaker hmm very thick in the rear quarter sections and then when you get to looking at it the wheelbase was different from the left to the right. Oof. And I was like, damn. And he was selling these things hand over fist, buddy. People are eating them up. And I'm like, hmm. Well, see, see that's 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 why I don't jump on fads and new things, right? Right. Give it time to work the fucking bugs out, people. You know? I mean, there, there's, there hasn't been a fad come out in the last 20 years. That I thought, ooh, I gotta get in on this. Not once. You know, anything from fidget spinners to freaking bell bottoms to polyester collars, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> if if I see the masses of asses, the sheep following their way to the slaughter, I am not interested. <laughs> you know. That's why I don't know when that fidget spinner thing came out. I said, Hell, we had that when I was young. Oh no, you didn't. I said, Yep, it was a cassette tape and a pencil. Damn straight, man. <laughs> I mean, really? That thing picks up some serious speed, Bob. Holy fuck. Damn. You should have seen it. It went from slow to, like, extremely quick. That was kind of neat to watch. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I got three more block to lay. No. Well, yeah, I, I got four. a couple. Later, go for it. We'll see you next well, that's, time. That's not your off the shelf fidget spinner there. It has it's been uh, hopped up a little bit. Uh oh. Bob and yeah. Bob yeah, look at this, Don. Look at this. What watch, watch, watch it watch it pick up. It, it well, looks it's, like it's, it's the short, frequency uh, between the light and the camera that makes it look yeah. like it. Good grief, Bob. See, that's what I mean by it. it's amusing to watch. <laughs> Almost looks like the revolver barrel. <laughs> well, there's no bullets like, flying out of that fucker at me. I'll be all right. You really want to see it go? I'll get my airbrush compressor going. And there you I, go. Oh first. fuck, air powered? Yeah, that just that'll make it go. Perpetually. It gets better up real fast. But yeah, that's got that's got upgraded bearings and oil all oiled up and stuff. It's it's not your average fitness spitter. As I seen a meme on Facebook, it's been a while back, but it says. You know, dogs are so easily entertained. He just, I, my, I sit here and watch my dog chase his tail for five minutes. And then he goes, huh. I sit here and watch my dog chase his tail for five minutes. Yeah. Talk about simple. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> do -do -do. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like that piece of paper that says, how do you keep an idiot busy for hours? You flip it over. How do you keep an idiot busy for hours? You flip it over. How do you yep. keep an idiot busy for hours? You flip it over. <laughs> Your sphincter well, says what? You hand a blonde. <laughs> a, uh, you hand a blonde a thing of orange concentrate. 
I said, here, read. <laughs> <laughs> How does a blonde turn on her bedroom light in the morning? She opens the car door. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that one. That's that's, that's that 80s, one. man. That's 70s. And yep. 80s. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah, there's some good ones from back in the day that people just won't understand. <laughs> yep. So how are you doing tonight, Bruce? Just hanging in there. Can I see the news? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, okay. I, I'm just. I was I'm just holding the on, chair down. I was. A, I was raised on Elvira, Mister of the Dark, so I'm a little macabre. Can I see the news? <laughs> yeah. She was every guy's dream. <laughs> What's I'm a her one called a tilt steering wheel? I'm thinking it's one of them Brady beds. <laughs> Space saver model. <laughs> <coughs> Headroom. <laughs> Headroom. <laughs> That's a good one, Red. <laughs> I don't think it necessarily applies to just blondes nowadays. <laughs> uh, yeah. Especially when Brunette became the new blonde. I gotta say, my ex wife's a brunette. She was just as blonde as anybody could be. Right. That's, uh, O'Gilly posted a, uh, a little <coughs> short video up here a few days ago. You know, a guy walks into Home Depot and there's like these four young people there. He said, Excuse me, can you help me? I said, oh, Sure. He said, I need a left handed hammer. <laughs> They all pulled their phones out. And I'm like, oh, damn. Really? <laughs> I went into Lowe's once and asked for some sky hooks. I had them scratching their heads. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, I don't know where that would be at. Well, you reckon I might be in the hardware section? Where do you keep all the other hooks? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> you know what's way more than that, though, is you go in there and ask for an actual tool, and they're like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, you one of them DEI hires, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. You got the job yes. with no qualifications. Don't know what the hell you're doing here. Can I get somebody else, please? <laughs> Every yeah. time I That's deal with that, shit, when I wind up dealing with something like that at Lowe's, I go back to the thinking. Um, remember the movie Kingpin? Mm -hmm. And they're in the bowling alley trying to do the uh, drunk salesman deal to get up a, a bowling game. And and oh, uh, Quade's screwing it up left and right, and uh, oh, uh, Woody Harrelson says, "Hey, you don't have to read them to sell them." Right? <laughs> they're supposed okay. to be encyclopedia salesmen. I'm like, well, that must be how Lowe's looks at hiring their people. They don't have to know the tool, know the product. They just have to sell it. Right. That my other favorite deal is when you go to um, AutoZone or Vance and the little 18-year-old kid behind the counter is telling you how you should fix your 1975 or whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah. going, dude, your grandmother was conceived in one of those. <laughs> hey, Don, do you have any of that expanding Gorilla Glue? ha uh -uh. I know they still sell it at Walmart where it's, it, you know, it has a little vial with a brush in it or whatever. You can brush it on or you yeah. can squirt it either way. I'm just thinking on them bricks, if you put some of that in there and then clamp it and let it spew out a little bit, it'll look like great stuff. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> you, can't, 
the old expanding foam thing, but it'd be a lot easier than messing with the whole freaking can of great stuff. <laughs> yeah, oh well, yeah. Because you know for sure once you pop that thing, it ain't working again. <laughs> this is uh this has definitely been a learning deal. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned one thing. You're not a bricklayer. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Now, would that be a mason or a plastic? <laughs> yeah, I'm a plastic mason. Well, I ain't one of the, I ain't a real good one of those. <laughs> That's all right. It ain't bad. It's supposed to be a, it's supposed to be a, a, a used building. This isn't brand new construction. <laughs> now, now, do you have half blocks as well, or do they cut in half for like in the ends? No, nah, I had to cut the one. I had to cut the ones in the ends, but I, I've done that there. That looks hella good to me, man. Three, thank you. Awesome. Was that seven high? Thank six you. High? Six high. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six. We're going higher. I just, I just run out of block. All right. Yeah. To me, you don't even need to weather it, man. Just shoot it with some flat clear and call it good. Look well, like I was thinking mold on the bottom. <laughs> right. I, I'm I'm thinking. Well, what I want to do is do all my dark weathering, so to speak. Yep. On and then spray. I'm almost like a whitewash. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, and I don't know that I can do what I'm thinking. But it's an experiment. It's an yeah, adventure. It's We're gonna see where it goes. I, I think if you put the dark weathering on, and then put an overcoat of some light white, and then sand it back down a little bit. And then do some final touch-ups to it. It would look like a weathered white wall. <laughs> that's that's kind of what I was thinking. Um, but um, Here's a that's where it's going. It. It. Put it on, a, you know, one of the showcase bases. Uh, like it's we're going to do it where I can put the cover back on it. Right. I was going to say it looks like a little long on the one end yet. <laughs> yeah, I got to trim the corners up. But again, like I said. This is an adventure. We're just seeing where it'll go. <laughs> it's going forward. <laughs> yeah, forward and upward. <laughs> yeah. Looking good, man. Well, thank you. I know I'd do I, the same thing with Lego blocks, but it wouldn't look the same. <laughs> well, I got the file was free. And again, it gives me another opportunity to learn how to scale it in the computer. Um, and nice thing about that, you know, when you hand cast, you make a master, you do this thing. Oh, it don't work. Well, you've got a wasted mold. Yep. With this, yep. if it's screwed up, I delete it, start over. <laughs> or adjust it or do what you need to do. Right. Make right. a copy first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have. And I still got a lot to learn. Uh, I'm not bragging whatsoever, but I've done better than I thought. I, I've I've learned things quicker than I thought I would have with the thing. Of course, to be honest with you, when I when I first decide uh, decided to say yes, to be honest with you, I figured I'd fool with it and say, "Nope, I'm not smart enough. Come get it." <laughs> Well, I successfully printed my very first part. Uh, I think it was Labor Day weekend. And I've been going to town ever since with it. Learning, screwing up, relearning. I think I'd probably have more fun on the blender side than anything myself. But I ain't good enough at that to do anything with it. Oh, man, every time I get over there, I literally, my head starts getting woozy. I mean, I, I like the computer stuff, personally. You know, like making paint schemes for cars on video games. I've done been doing that since early 90s. But. I, I didn't listen to that damn counselor in school that I need to learn computer. I'm like, I'm going to work on cars. Mechanicking and paint and body work. Who needs a damn computer? Yeah. Apparently it's they do nowadays. They don't know how to fix a car without one. What's up, Natasha? Good morning to you. 
Good morning, Miss Natasha. Hi, Tasha. You know, it's 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 morning, that old ad, the old adage where the school teacher tells the student, "You ain't gonna get nowhere in life sitting on your ass." Dude becomes a truck driver. That's all they yeah. do is sit on their ass. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, Daniel, I, I've watched his videos on that, and nothing against Miguel, but he talked and moved around too fast. That's on me. You know, when, when I did my video on a noob uses DaVinci Resolve for editing videos, I, I went through a couple of things over and over because I know re repetition is where you're going to learn it, right? Right. And I, I did the repetition over and over early and in a small enough section to where you know where this button is now, you know where the next button is, the third button, the fourth button, the fifth button. Now you repeat that same five, and then you repeat that same five, and now you know how to do this very basic, simple part, which is how you edit a video. Beyond that, there's little tips and tricks you can sprinkle in all you freaking want. But for a noob using it, just that simple little, this is all you need to do, which will make your videos a million times better. Get rid of the dead time. Get rid of the bullshit. This is how you cut it out. Boom, boom, done. It's out. Right? Yeah. See, now, that's Miguel, see, Blender has, these keys have multiple functions per key. And the way he was teaching, this is how it come to me, is he basically it was like he assumed we already knew the keys could, this key had four functions. And <laughs> right, he's just right. click, 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 boom, 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 click, click. And I'm sitting there going, uh. This is the advanced class. You got kindergarten? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. See, that, Yo, that's remember? my thing. That's my thing. When it comes to a learning thing, I need to start at the kindergarten level. Because if you jump me into like third grade and I got to start there and I don't know any of that basic freehand, I'm out. My, my brain is fucked. And I'll That's, never get past kindergarten or third grade from that point on. Well, see, when I first got this printer, uh, of course, you know, he, he I got a laptop with it to operate it with. Um, I didn't. The first thing I did after that is I called my niece. She teaches fifth grade elementary school. I said, I need help. Come on, I'll help you. First thing I told her, we got everything opened up enough. I says, I know how old I am. I know you know how old I am. But teach me like you're teaching the slowest student you have in your class. Yep, yep. And because, I mean, I didn't even know how to take the file, put it in the slicer program and do all that and save it and you know, she had to teach me all that. I have a cheat sheet here that's five pages long. But now, once I got all that, I just kept doing it. Kept doing, you know, re repetition. Learn through repetition because we are creatures of habit. And when we do it enough times, it becomes second nature. Now you can move on. But if you ain't got that repetition under you or the the memory of that repeating process... You're, you're going to stump your toe every time you try to step forward. Yeah, and, and trust me, them five, them five pages of cheat notes were used a lot. Right, right. And I still have to go back every now and then because I'll have that the her moment, you know. Britta. Morning, hey, Britta. Britta. Hi, Britta. <laughs> we're still up. So, I mean, it was, it's been very enjoyable. Even, I mean, there's times I wanted to pick it up off the bench and carry it out there in the driveway and run over with my truck for, I don't know, Shit's a couple of hours. <laughs> then, <laughs> you know, but I learned, <laughs> which I actually learned that a long, long, long time ago. When it gets that frustrating, turn it off, cover it up, go do something else. Yep. Yeah, there ain't nothing saying when you're learning that you got to push it so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I still, like I said, I still got a lot to learn, but I think I've done pretty good so far. Yeah. 
I don't use AutoCAD, but I definitely use cardboard CADs. <laughs> <laughs> Make a fucking template or something, transfer it to plastic, and then build it from there. <laughs> yep. Exactly. I don't tell. Uh... Oh, in that's sweet, uh, brother. That's sweet. Wake up to see us all. <laughs> like waking up to a nightmare. <laughs> Better than waking up from a nightmare. <laughs> Say, Ooh, there's that ugly ball-headed guy from Alabama. <laughs> oh. mm, nightmare comes to mind. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I had a girl tell me one time, she said, I'll haunt your dreams. She did, but not in the manner she thought she would. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to snack a little bit, so I'll turn the camera off. Get your munch on. <laughs> Man, I had that chocolate craving. So, break out a spoon and the Nutella. <laughs> Did you finish that one, Bob, or are you just waiting for it to dry? Well, I can't. I got all the decals on the bottom half on. Oh, so now you got to flip it over? I got the decal set on there, so I, I'm going to have to... Do a couple rounds. That's the hardest part of the egg plane is to get a flat decal to go around that round. It's a really rounded surface. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's got more angles than a politician. You know, I'm going to have to let that dry probably overnight, hit it again in the morning with salva set, let it sit and dry again. Then I can turn it over and start on, start on that side. And that's, that's the bottom side, right? Yeah. Gotcha. That's the hard side. The top doesn't have near as much stuff on it. Yeah, if there's anybody above you, you're either fighting with them or flying with them. So. <laughs> yeah, it is. The top is just basically, I mean, there's markings on the tail and it's got stripes on the wings and the matching a piece on the nose. That's about it on yeah. top. The bottom is where all the, all the fancy, schmancy stuff is. <laughs> so how many of, how, how many of them girl figures do you got or have you ever bought any with them? Well, they don't come you have to buy the special edition kits to get the one with the resin girl figure. Right. And they're about 40 bucks for those. That's why I was asking how many of them you have or none. You have none. <laughs> thing with the uh, 66 coops from Hasegawa that Hasegawa did. Um, right, like your 65 Bonneville or 66. 66 yeah. yeah bonneville they did a, a buick they did the chevy impala um they did the ford thunderbird and they did uh God, what was so basically one? you bought the girl and got a free kit in the process right the, the car was intended to be the backdrop or the model yeah, for the, yeah. the girl figure to sit on whenever yeah, i buy one I, I, I sell the resin girl figure for almost what i paid for the kit I just keep yeah. the car. I remember you building that. <laughs> I really yeah, like the car. That one, that one so. turned out really nice. Yeah, I bought a file this morning. I got a I got a print on guy that's tagging a wall is what he's doing. He's in a hoodie, got the rattle can in his hand. Uh printing that for a guy. While I was going through the he found the file and sent me the link. Well, I went and looked at that guy's page of what other figures he done. Two hours later, uh, <laughs> I had 12 pages of figures. There's like 40 per page. Damn. Construction workers, mechanics. I found all the figures for the Munsters. Nice. Uh, all the figures for Dukes of Hazard except Enos. Um. Yeah, and it's not like you can put Cletus on a diet. <laughs> yeah, I never liked Cletus. <laughs> um, but then towards the tail end, he got some, oh, there was a female figures all through there, but there towards the, the last two pages, they were some risque female figures. Well, he got to start somewhere, and that's where he started. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you well, know how photo albums go, right? You start at the, the most recent, and you end up at the last, which was the first upload, so... <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
that's where he started. <laughs> well, there was like six female figures that were free downloads. So I grabbed three of them. Well, why wouldn't you? <laughs> that's, I mean, man, I grab all the free ones I can. I said, well, I do too, to a degree. But I make sure I'm buying a few too. You know, I, I don't mind the not so risque stuff because I, I really like jamming up to rockabilly music. Yeah. And the the one I watch on YouTube is just a 24 hour live, you know. And on the video itself, they got all these different images that slideshow. So you get women, you get cars, you get banners, garage banners, all this stuff, right? But it's all rockabilly, you know. And I wouldn't mind having a collection of them women around my cars, you know, because they they would fit with the show rod theme, you know. I got one. I got one female figure you like them. I got a fifties pinup gas pump girl. Yeah, you know the pinup stuff to me isn't like dirty sexual nudity. It's it's a style, and it to me it's pretty, you know. That's me. I kind of what I I call it the modern. Uh, vaudeville type thing right right you know it was very risque for the 50s but you know hell we see girls like that at, well not that pretty but girls like that at dress like that at walmart now <laughs> well how much would you charge me to have two of those of the same car same girl oh uh, i don't know figured what 10 bucks a piece that'd be about right i think you can get them on ebay for like 15 or something like that but yeah, because if I had two identicals, I'd probably do one black with a little bit of red in her hair and the white polka dot top or something, and then another one blonde or something or whatever, you know, and or even deck them out almost twins like on purpose, yeah. you know. But that, if that, if, um... if you know what my show rod era is, it's everything yeah. from mid '60s to late '70s. That's the show rod era, you know, because after that came the muscle cars. <laughs> you know? and, uh, see, I got that. I got that Ron Olson file to print the uncertainty. And in that file, it's got the showgirl. It's not the same one from the monogram kit. There's a little bit of change, but she's uh, long pants. Um, maybe a, like it's a them. short sleeve t-shirt, but. I mean, she's I love, dressed dress. I love denim, yep. <laughs> especially when they paint it on. <laughs> Let's see the ones in the girl figures I got, I got today. Uh, one of them's in go-go boots, and she got shorts on. I mean, they're short, but they're shorts. Um, yeah, see, I got a figure close to what that is, like that lady sit, leaned up against that car. <laughs> I love that. That's looking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything about trans names. <laughs> oh, that's clever, Bob. <laughs> right. But, yeah, I mean, you know, now he had a couple. There was one old dude had her bent over the desk or something. Uh, <laughs> those, I, mean, I, this, I mean, I'll joke about them. This, I'm not interested in printing a bunch of them or nothing like that. I mean, you, 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 can, you can kink shame me if you want, but my favorite woman out there is a librarian. <laughs> Holding oh. a book or two, got the glasses on the ends of the nose with that little downward mm -hmm. looking over glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Long hair yep. up in a bun or something. Yep. Okay, yep. I'm yep. out. Yep. <laughs> Put some denim oh. on it or a skirt. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not kink shaming <laughs> you because I have the same thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, know, Miss, Miss Prude in public. Yeah. Super freak in the bedroom. Yeah, you oh, know she got to let that bird out of the cage every now and then. <laughs> I don't know. That's just always been my thing. I'm not into the French maid. She can fuck off. She ain't even cleaning my house. Get the fuck away. <laughs> you know? That's uh. But you showed yeah, me a bird with that look on her face, and yeah, it, it's over. <laughs> and so I've been. I've, I've talked with the guy. We got to get together on price and all. Um. But if I send him pictures of myself, he can, He says he could create an STL file where I can print a figure of myself. 
that would be pretty badass to sit next to your red truck. <laughs> well, that's what I was, you know, I've built them. I've already built the model of the red truck when we first got it, when it had the ugly ass hood scoop and the gold stripes on it. <laughs> so now you got to do a new one with the modifications. <laughs> yeah, up, the next updated. one I'm going to do up is going to be more of the dream truck. You know what we would like to do if we had the money. <laughs> so here's a question: the first one you built was that the '56 with the doors opening or not? Like the hot rod version where it has the doors open. Oh no 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 no! Um, the tr the little red truck we got's a two thousand one Ranger. No, I was talking about your shop car truck. Oh, my shop truck. Uh, that's actually actually we used the Foose FD one hundred uh, as a template for that truck. I've never built the model. I've got it sitting here. Uh -oh. And all we've done to the boost truck is change the wheels. Pretty much, yeah. Because I mean, okay, I, 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 I might I, pop out of here. Have a good one there, Bruce. Take yeah, care. I don't want to go outside, and it's time for for them to go bed. We give it about thirty more minutes, and then I'm gonna head to bed too. <laughs> night, Thanks, everybody. Bye. Chat. Have a good night, night. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, we'll see you in about twelve hours. Yep, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've built a couple of the, I've built almost every one of the Revell Hot Rod Series kits, yeah. in, in, including like three of the Ford trucks. And my favorite part about it was the doors open. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so my thought was, if you had a model of the red Ford oh. truck, the old truck, but the Ford truck is the hood scoop you're talking and the, about. But if yeah. if the old one has the hood scoop and the pinstripe that you don't have now would you build one with the doors opening so that you'd have that little extra detail of the doors open, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, if that was all that was available, yeah. Because, um, I mean, 53 to 56 ain't that much difference, are there? No, the roof is different. Uh, 50, 55 was the first year, I think, for the wraparound windshield. Okay. Uh, that was the big change. I mean, there's some dimension changes but visually they look the same like I said other than windshield and back glass yeah so you should change your shop card a little bit <laughs> I had uh, I talked to this TS decals about doing my shop logo as a decal and then I run across financial trouble so I had to shelf that idea for a while right because so, <coughs> I want to do that and then uh, I've got two Carmagias here. I want to do a replica of both the Carmagias that Dad and I raced back in the uh, 80s, early 90s. So now that's that's yeah, a red flag and I can get behind because I'm not a bug or a Samba guy at all. You know, I don't I don't really <laughs> care for the vans or the bugs. But a Carmagia, to me, that's pretty cool. Well, he called it, the car. It, the just car called. A, it, it just had more angles and curves and looked more like right. you know like a corvair or something you know it had more shape to it than a fucking rounded german beetle <laughs> you know? well that's volkswagen volkswagen neither designed or built the carmagia body they supplied the platform and hired out to have the body done right and that's because they yeah. wanted a sporty looking little car and replaced the carmagia is sporty looking well they definitely got one yeah, I mean, it, it kind of looks like a mini version of a Studebaker almost. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's got it's a, lot of got a little more there. rounded in it instead of some sharp lines. You know, well, that's you know, we call the the gear, both gears were called Poor Boys Toy. Um, Dad's repair shop was called Poor Boys Auto Clinic, and uh, it was a circus style lettering that said Poor Boy. No. Can't remember what well, that see, font was uh, called. See now that's the Carmen is another one of those iconic classic cars that Ravel Monogram and EMT haven't done. I know. They they got this Volkswagen platform chassis. Let's change the fucking exactly. body name for you. What the hell? <laughs> well, think about it though. Ravel Monogram, AMT, MPC, 
missed the boat on a lot of cars. About 75% of them. Yeah. Straight up, straight up. I mean, the stuff they got, we are all glad they have. But there's so many little niches out there. You know, well, like, still like, say like they a still... 73 Trans Am Firebird, you know, different nose, different grill. They got the 70. They got the 76. Yeah. But where's the 70 <laughs> or 73, you know? Well, it's, you know, they, they you know, drowned with us in van kits in the 70s. And I understand yeah. that was a craze. Yeah, but there see, was that's one of those bad things. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, how many versions of the Pacer did we really need? Well, we could oh, use yeah. the, what is it, SX4 or SX6 or whatever? You know, the little notchback AMC? Not a yeah. Pacer, but, you know, the little 4x4 pre-Eagle version. <laughs> yep. You know? Well, that's what I was saying. They missed so many cars they should have done. And they've right. done some. It's like, what the? I mean, how many times have they... Uh, Reissued that new tooled 58 Etzel. Yeah. And don't yeah, get me wrong. That's like a very car. niche market. Every That car was one of those love it or hate it. And there's a lot that didn't like it. <laughs> you know? Right. I mean, even Henry Ford didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> did not. <laughs> you know? So why would you go and make a model of the most hated car, but you don't make one of the most desired cars? It's like the, the old Cutlass. You know, it took forever for that kit to finally be released. Yeah. I mean, a Dodge exactly. Phoenix would be cool. The The precursor to the uh, Valiant or Dart, one of the two, whatever it was, the Phoenix. Johan yeah. makes one, but it wasn't called a Phoenix. It was called a Dart. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. It, it just... And I get it, you know, some of the cars, I know I'm, it's because it's a personal thing, uh, but like at 58 Etzel, they spent all that money tooling that car up brand new when yeah. they could have reissued the old annual they had. <laughs> that would have satisfied the people that wanted a 58 Etzel, and then they could have took all that tooling money and give us something else. Well, I mean, if the world wasn't run by greed, We'd have a new, a new dozen kits every year. You yeah, know, this is the '78 model. They make the promos. They go door to door to sell the cars. Well, fuck, turn it into a model kit. This is the '78. This is the '79. You know, but no greed had to step in the way. Where can we cut costs? Well, these are for toys for kids. We don't make a lot of money. We make some, but not enough. You know, yeah. Come on, man. Keep making freaking models. <laughs> you know? This, and think about it. This ain't been a kid's hobby in three decades. Well, it, it's hard to say because, I mean, if you think of the very first kits that came out, they were like a block of pine, let alone a block of balsam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? You had to carve that fucker to make it. <laughs> you know? But look at the tooling from 1990 to current. The, the new tool, not to reissue stuff. You look at how more detailed the kids got. Yeah. Would you have built that when you was eight years old? Uh, honestly, I mean, that's that's part of the problem. I mean, we, we learned about cars from our brother or our father, right? Or right. Our uncle or somebody who was into the cars, right? We, we all got into whatever it was in this hobby in the first place. Rather, it was Matchbox or whatever. You know, somehow or another, we got into this little circle, <laughs> you know. And we, we obviously had somebody guiding us or inspiring us, if not pushing yeah. us, but inspiring us, you know. And we didn't know what the fuck we were doing in the beginning, but we were doing it. I mean, when, you, when I was young and I had that first snap tight kick, I didn't think overwhelmed and there's too many pieces. I, all I knew is I was four. It said ages five and up. I wasn't old enough. My brother said, shut up and do it. Yeah, my, next, yeah. my next kit was an AMT glue kit. And I'm sure it had every bit of 80 some plus parts in it. And he goes, let me see this. And he grabs the chrome tree and he's like, yep, yeah, there's four parts on there that are going to break when you take them off. I bust, busted three of them. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I still built the well, kids. See, <laughs> let's just it. We had, you know, like myself, my dad was building models when I was a little guy, little, little diaper. Um, now I got two cousins that are a little bit older than me and two uncles that are, you know, the five of us are all within four years of each other age wise. We all built models. Uh, when mom and I had moved back to Michigan up to Lincoln Park there in South Side, uh, Southgate, two of the guys I went to school with just up the street from me both built models. One of them had an older brother that had built a bunch. You know, I go over to their house and see just shelves and shelves of built models. It was inspiration. Yeah, and see, that's I what I mean. That. That's what I mean. You saw something that motivated you internally to go in that direction. Rather than someone saying, here, do this. Go go get out of my hair. Go do this. And not do anything to help you with it. You saw it. You knew there was going to be some work to get there. And once you got a kit and you started reading the instructions, following the steps and gluing the shit together and on your fingers and cutting yourself and everything else. And, you know. You finally, <laughs> Damn, dark. You ain't found nothing yet. <laughs> Well, that's, you know, and there's been a break in that deal. Um, you know, there, the, you know, the generation come up behind us, there wasn't as many dads and uncles and cousins and neighborhood kids doing it. Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, that's that's the one thing with evolution of time. I mean, I don't care what it is; it's all part of the plan. But you know, like like nowadays with the cell phone. Ain't nobody got time to sit down and do a hobby. They got cell phones to scroll through. So good yeah, luck. Yeah, we got to spend the next eight hours on Facebook. Yeah. Monsters for 35 with free shipping? That ain't bad. Hmm. Well, that's so. Uh, I mean, my youngest, See, Victoria... She's not in the modeling, but then again, she is. Um, it comes and goes. Everybody's like, well, you need, I, so I'm not pushing her, but I planted the seed. We just got to, you know, I fertilize it every now and then, and we'll see what happens. She has picked up on other crafts, though, and the modeling helped that. <coughs> Surge, it's a Manx buggy, which is a Volkswagen rear end. Yes, you can use Volkswagen parts on it. Chassis pen is 100% Volkswagen on a Manx. Yeah. You can even swap the motor up for a freaking Corvair engine. <laughs> so it's like uh, fucking bike. <laughs> yep. Well, it's different, but you know what I mean. It's the same thing. You know, it's rear transaxle. It's like well, it's the motor behind the transaxle, so it's the same thing, you know? Right. It's not in front of it like a GT40, you know? Right. <laughs> and the thing about the GT40, the only thing that was forward was the motor. Yeah, well, that's I what mean, I mean. You know, you get your rear transaxle. Which side of the transaxle is the motor on, in front or behind? <laughs> Corvette, right. VW, Porsche, it's in the back, and then... Everything else in mid mid engine cars, it's in the front. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was oh. But you know, I was you know, growing course, you know, like any of us, I started out with Hot Wheels. Um, sure ain't, man. <laughs> and drawing pictures of cars. Um, you know, it was you know, and I had to you know, when I was in elementary school there was a couple of teenagers in the neighborhood that had their little hot rods and I'm sure they are nowhere near as nice as my memory says they are. But <laughs> hey Dart, if you can't see us, Britta says hi. <laughs> Cause he's scrolling through eBay. He ain't looking. He's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's on a mission. Honestly, so. Serge, when it comes to a model, there are no limits. If nope. you want to put Chevy parts on it, put them in there. If you want to put Ford parts in it, put them in there. <laughs> Hell, yeah, we know like people who are good. Gonna run. <laughs> we, we, we know people who want to put a Ford motor in a Mopar. 
and vice well, versa. <laughs> one of my future projects is a, a Mopar and a Chevrolet. <laughs> yeah, see, there's no harm in doing it, you know. On, on, on the, on the uh, experimental side of things, you can figure out what it would take and if it would really work with minimal fuss before you go out in the garage to do it to a real one, <laughs> you know? Yep. Well, look at how many of the famous car builders out there built models as kids. Yeah. You know how many Barris has in his collection, some of which he built his own? <laughs> right. Let alone Gene Winfield. He would tell you stories of when he was younger. Yep. Carl Casper. Oh, he, even he Chip Bush was a, is a model car builder. Yeah. Steve Mignonti. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love his model series. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, right? I, I love it when he goes out on the junkyard crawl and he brings the magazines and sometimes the model. You yeah. Know? Or yeah. the box. You know, it's like, dude. You, you know it's staged because he's got the books and stuff all placed around when he gets to it, but that's that's TV 101. You know, you got to make it flow, but still, oh, yeah. I think it's cool. He's like, okay, this car is here. This car is here. I got to get these books, these models, these things. Let's go shoot today, <laughs> you know? And they'll they'll do like 12 episodes in one junkyard, and then they break them up over the year or whatever, but mm -hmm. that, that's just movie 101, but, that's but I fine. always thought that was cool, you know, and I, I watch some people, and sometimes it's like Lucas C, and other times it's not. Where they, <laughs> they grab a kit and they fondle it nicely, and then other times, like Lucas C, he's throwing that thing around like it's made out of die cast. You know? yeah. I was like, dude, that's going to snap. You know, I cringe. <laughs> you know? Well, it's like Sean over there at the Scale Model Car Guys channel, his yeah. intro. And he yeah. tosses that damn Johan promo. He does that on purpose, and that's the best part of it. You know, I, I can't exactly. agree with that because I know it was intentional. Whereas, you know, like who was – well, I've done it a couple times in my own videos. You're, you're trying – if you ain't got one of them whirly gigs and you pick it up to move it around and you drop it. It's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you know? Well, I, I was war watching uh, Horton Hot Rod Shop the other day. He was showing yeah. his rollback. Yep. And knock the antenna off. Yep. <laughs> Good old Phil, man. Yeah, I like Phil. He's he's cool. Well, myself, I my little '63 wagon drag car. I have got. I have taken it out of the case to show in one of these lives twice. Both times I dropped it. Both times broke one front wheel off. <laughs> Someone it's asked like about it the other night. I said, "Nope." It's staying where it's at. <laughs> it's like when I did the video of, uh, I don't remember if it was what I build and why or something, but I had my uh, Ed Fink's Druid Princess. It's a one of one <laughs> ultra rare show rod kit. I yeah. bought the six pieces of resin and I built everything else, right? And I have this, you know, a, a piece of foam board, a black one that I use underneath my I put it over top of my keyboard so on my desk because mm -hmm. otherwise I ain't got I got a shitty background, right? And so there's a it hangs past my desk. And when I was doing the video of it, I scooted my chair back, got my camera between me and the car and the board, and I went to pick my hand up to go move the car and I bumped the foam board and it knocked oh. the header off and something else off of it. I'm like, oh shit, well, there we go. I gotta fix this now. You know, I mean these things happen. So, I yeah. mean, I continued on with the video. Parts broke. Big deal. I'll fix them. But <laughs> I, and when I got those parts, I had some of that fucking Hobby Lobby make a mold shit. Yeah. So I cast or I molded the, the body parts. I didn't mold the coffin, but I did mold the four body panels or five body panels. So at some point, I'm going to take my clear resin because that's what I have is clear. And I'm going to see if I can't make one of the, another one of those. Sweet. I'd like to do it in non-clear, but my buddy that I made the American flag stuff with, I have so much fucking leftover resin because, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it don't all pour out of the bottle, right? Right. It, and when you're measuring 
micrometers or microliters, I should say, you'd get down to the bottom. He's like, yeah, that's that's only about 20 liters or 20 milligrams or what it flew it out, something, whatever. It's, it's like a tester bottle worth, you know? So yeah. I had like like 12 of these fucking A and B two-part bottles everywhere, right? So when he left for the night, I took him, I flipped them all upside down into one, you know, all the A into one bottle, all the B into another. Now I got yep. like like three inches of a bottle on both of them. You know? So I, I can cast a bunch of parts. I just never got around to doing it. <laughs> well, see, that's what I do here with these bottles of resin I get for the printer. Uh, you know, the stuff is the consistency of motor oil. Yeah, uh, like, get, like fucking the zinc additive, the fucking syrup. <laughs> yeah. So what I do is, of course, I got a funnel and I keep uh, strainers here. Uh, I got the funnel made to where it goes right just inside the bottle. It's good and tight. Right. And I'll stack up, you know, bottles that are supposedly empty, should we say. And then one day, ever so often, I'll sit there. Just one at a time, stand it up there and let it sit there for six, seven hours. Yeah, and you uh, might only get a few milliliters or something out of it, but you get some. <laughs> well, uh, the biggest batch I done, I think I had eight bottles. And when I got draining, got done draining off all those bottles, I had damn near a half a bottle yeah. of resin. So, it's, so. it's amazing how much won't come out of the bottle when you just pour it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I've used that to do a lot of experimenting. I mean, yeah, you know, well, we I only want to talk about how many bottles this shit I've been through already. But I can tell you this, I have produced three gallons of not so good parts. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> well, we keep, those cheese, we those, buckets, away, <laughs> those buckets of cheese yeah, balls you get like at Walmart. Yep. My dad has a fascination with those. Um, and he saves the damn buckets. He washes them out. Yeah, why not? Well, I've been grabbing one every so often and using that to throw the, to put the hold parts in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now, how many butter bowls did your grandma have in her cabinet now? Come on. You, you know, you know, like, like on certain holidays, like, Christmas or Easter or whatever, when candy is a big thing, my mom always takes like a pickle jar, you know, like, like a gallon pickle jar. She'll shove however many pieces of candy in there till it's full. And then she'll hand it to me and say, count all of these and write it down and then put them back in the jar. Right. Cause then for the holiday, she's like, put in your guess, how many are in there? Whoever gets closest gets it. Right. Oh, cool. Do the same thing with model parts. <laughs> well, like say if you had bucket seats, bench <laughs> seats, wheels, axles, a chassis, a body, you're going to take up a bunch of space with some big parts. But then yeah. you got all these little fucking side mirrors and license plates and headlight lenses. And fucking, you know what I mean, right? Fucking tiny pieces. How what? many parts are in there? Now, that would what? be the way to do a giveaway for your channel. You have to guess in the comments how many parts in the jug, whoever gets closest gets the win. There's none of this fucking random comment picker or got to do all that. No, just comment how many parts you think are in there. If you're the closest, you win. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny that Bob mentioned the butter bowls. Um, there are several butter dishes here with parts in them <laughs> also. <laughs> uh, but I use those uh, like I've got one butter dish right now. It's got the pieces. To four of the five, these 572s I was building. Um, I use them to separate parts in. I uh, keep one close to the <laughs> curing station. When I've got stuff curing, I just take it out of the curing station, throw it in there, and when it fills up, I bring it over here, and that's when I start bagging and tagging and so on. <laughs> um, but uh, well, the guy that owns this printer is big into dioramas and stuff. So him and a buddy of his that he works with, they're into that stuff. I take the seconds or hold parts in those buckets up to them, and they go through them, and they're just having themselves a field day. <laughs> All right. 
I mean, that's that's one thing I've I've never been afraid of. You know, people got like misprints or, you know, like short shots. You know, like a body missing parts or something. You know, right. I'm not afraid to take something like that and make something of it. I like dirt track racers, so if it's a body and it ain't got a windshield, that's my first thought. <laughs> you know, exactly. exactly. I, I don't I don't go the the route of oh I'm going to build a demo derby car. Yeah, I'm I'm just. I like them, but I'm not into the dented and bent part, you know, like, right. like, like when I did my Holy goat, I could have dented the fuck out of that body, but then I, it would never stand a chance as a rebuilder later down the road. Like say, if I pass away or somebody buys, it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I just took a Sharpie and shot the shit out of it. And bullet holes of black Sharpie. <laughs> you can send that fucker down, throw it in the purple pond. You got a brand new clean body to start with again. You yep. know? Hasn't That's been touched or modified. <laughs> Look, I know a lot of people that take like coffee cans with the screw on lids. They'd screw the lid to the rafters in their basement and then lift the jar up and spin it on. <laughs> I've seen lots of that stuff over the years, full of parts and nails and God knows what. <laughs> we keeping you awake, Bob? Gentlemen, I hate to part good company, but... Yeah, that's all right. Bob wants to leave shortly here anyway, so... It's two thirty in the morning here. I mean, it's not like I got to get up in the morning and punch a time clock, but I would like to be up and at it before lunch. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't mind having a, a time clock to punch on, like a beat on a punching bag or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like having my boss's picture on a dartboard. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm clocking in or clocking out. I'm just punching the clock. <laughs> Yeah, I spent a little bit of time in middle management. Uh, found out it wasn't for me. But I was told <laughs> as I took the position, guy told me, he says, you know you've made it when your name, when you find your name written on the bathroom wall. All right. Well, about a month into being the shop manager there, my name showed up on the bathroom wall. And uh, we always had a Monday morning shop meeting. I got everybody together. And I pulled out my wallet, pulled out a hundred dollar bill. I says, whoever wrote that on the wall, if they'll man up and admit it, they get this hundred bucks and that's all. There'll be no reprisals, nothing. Nobody took me up on that offer. <laughs> See how they I was going to, you know, I was thanking them for me making it. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Baby food jars work just as good too, man. Especially the Gerber ones with the metal lids on them. Oh yeah, those are awesome jars. <laughs> screw them lids to whatever, and then screw your jar on it. It'll hold just nice and tight. <laughs> well, I found some of these pill bottle lids work better on the Pache jars than the Pache lids do. No. Uh, my decal water bowl here is right from Taco Bell. <laughs> I hear you. It had one, at one time held cheese nacho fries in it. Oh, I, I got the cheaper version. It was a banquet. <laughs> Nachos actually sound yeah. good. Nice nacho grande right about now. Oh man, y'all hush. <laughs> <laughs> They're closed. I can't go back. I don't. I was gonna go to bed. Now I'm gonna go to the kitchen. <laughs> See, I haven't I haven't smoked any weed in forever. But yet, I still get that similar kind of midnight munchies. What the hell's up with that? I don't know. just used to eating at that time. See, like right now, y'all mentioned nachos, and all of a sudden, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> the only problem is the only thing open around here is Waffle House. I mean, at least you have that. I have 30 miles to get anywhere, and even that town has nothing open past midnight. The problem is, well, the I wait for like another hour and a half, to, they're gonna baker down right on the next block. It's gonna spire up, start <laughs> making donuts, and that the smell in the is, spring is killer. It's like four o'clock in the morning, you start smelling donuts cooking. 
the two Waffle Houses close to me are close to the two strip clubs in town, too. So, no. <laughs> yeah, we know the story of that one. <laughs> I don't want to go through another stripper food fight in a, a Waffle House at 3 o'clock in the morning. And you don't want to clean glitter out of your car. <laughs> well, there be no chance of no glitter getting in the car or truck. But, yeah, no, no. I learned my lesson. Strange things happen at 3 a.m. <laughs> That's what I used to like about going to Walmart at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, when they were 24-7. You think things were fun, funny oh, looking and goofy and all during the day? Locked up stuff there overnight at Walmart for, for COVID. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I will admit, admit they make some of the best viral videos. <laughs> yep. I've seen stuff in there going, yes, there is something similar to life on other planets because it's here now <laughs> we even had radio codes for when we had a real good one to tell people where they was at and make sure they got a chance to see them <laughs> <laughs> that's what i miss i mean walmart's two miles from my house so if it was open right now i'd probably over video it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now that yeah, would be a money making channel <laughs> yeah i was gonna say that would monetize you and <laughs> yeah. it's like what me me and cliff and a couple others were talking about on his rec fest stream celebrity death match right we, we were talking yeah. about maybe making edited videos or something like that and i'm like dude if i could do animation videos on davinci resolve i'd already have a million subscribers <laughs> yeah. I, I would already be done past that <laughs> you know Britney Spears takes on Abdullah the Butcher. <laughs> no, we, we were talking about like Jeff Fafa against Jeff the Ferret. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, I mean, Cliff against somebody or, you know, two, two on two with, or one on one or death matches or whatever. Right you know? match, yeah. But instead <laughs> of doing the claymation, we were going to use paper dolls. Because oh I mean, I could, I could do like Glenn. I mean, you've seen my model cars with Glenn video where I drew all of that, right? Yeah. I, I could draw figures and have paper doll clothes clipped onto him, and he comes in, tears his shirt off, and tears his pants off, and he's in his fucking neato, you know? <laughs> oh, God, please. Did not need that mental image at 2 30 in the morning. <laughs> but you know what I mean, right? So, yeah. I mean, if I, could, if I could pull off a video like, a, like South Park. It's just a camera aiming down at a backdrop, and they change the eyeballs in the mouth, take a picture, change the eyeballs in the mouth, take a picture. That's how they do their animation, right? So if I did, like, the same thing with paper dolls, that would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> I just yeah. don't want to spend three days making the people, another four days taking the pictures, and then months doing the editing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, because you need like 60 pictures for one every second of the video. Or 24 yeah. pictures. Yeah, I mean, you, you can do it jump, 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 jump or something if you wanted to. But yeah, I mean, that's what I mean. If I could do animation, because there there are programs where you can get eyes to blink, right? Use, use like a green screen and cut all that out and all you have is the eyes. It can do its thing. The mouth can do its thing. You can crop parts out, add parts, layers, whatever. I mean, I can do some of that. I'm just not good enough at that to pull it off. You know what I mean? Uh, the way you were first talking about doing I said, yeah, that sounds great. 2,500 hours of editing for a 15-minute video. <laughs> That'll make you about two grand in about four years. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Well, so I've been monetized for over a year, and I've made a whopping... A hundred and thirty-one dollars. Oh, so you've been paid off once. Yeah. Because <laughs> they don't pay you until it's over a hundred bucks. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'll be monetized for too long, and hopefully I get enough to pay for my StreamYard account. Now it'll make me happy. Well, if you keep doing live streams, you get the watch time, and yeah. that's what matters. If you do yeah. like I do with the video games, and you put out a 20-minute video and people watch like five minutes of it, it takes fucking eternity to get enough hours to get paid per month. Yeah. You know. So if I could make the two fifty a year I'm, that I'm paying for a stream yard, then that'd make me more than happy. That's all I'm after. That's me. I'm either going to have to get more active with my channel or just close the damn thing out. I, I would say keep your 10. 
period. I, I saw Frank Frizzo shut his down, and that disturbed me. That 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 upset me pretty much. <laughs> he was that fucking close, and all he had to do is a few more steps to make it grow a little further. But no, he went the wrong direction. So yeah. You know. I mean, I've, I've been sitting that when I was doing the video game thing. I think I had had like eighty something. Got into the video games. Got it up to like two fifty, almost three hundred. Then I started posting model videos, and now I'm up into like six ten, six twenty, something like that. I'm not in no rush to be monetized because I know once I am at that that threshold, now I got to maintain this, and I don't want to do that. I just want to yeah, post when I feel like it. You know, that's what happened to me. I, I started losing interest uh, by the time I needed to really be picking it up. So. Yeah, I mean, not not only that. It's like if I wanted to get monetized, I want to have a brand, which my name and my RPM games or whatever. That's my logo. That's my brand. Whatever which is what a channel is but what's the value i can offer somebody as to why they would want to become a member of my channel you know what i mean yeah um i mean what what can i provide well, that's worth being paid for is what i once i figure that part out then i'll step forward and worry about the thousand subs and the watch hours but until then i still ain't even found my niche yet <laughs> same here well, I'm out of here. My yeah, eyes are fuzzy. I don't know if Bob left or if he's just letting us leave or what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My camera shut. I just seen I looked up. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> My camera All right, fellas. So, Bob, I appreciate it. Yep, we'll be back in tomorrow evening. Good Thank everybody Dr. still hanging in chat. We got RKD and we got Kevin and Daniel, I think, is still floating around. Red. Britta and Natasha just woke up. They're out there. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back and, and at still still everybody in chat. Everybody in chat, howdy ho. We'll see you in the next one. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Later, y'all. Bye.